Welcome to the January 8th, 2015 meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee. If everyone would rise, I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For those just tuning in, tonight we will continue um, part two of two and of the um, Warren articles. As those watching the other night saw, we went quite long until 11.30. We're going to try to speed it up a little bit tonight, but give everybody enough time to let us know what they need and why they need it. Chris, do you have no? Okay. I'd like to just go around the board and our introductions as usual. I'll start with Joe. Brian Lapham. Sonny Kravis. Mike Pierce. Richard Barnier. Here's a night. Joan Rice, Secretary. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Mike Bluff. Stephen LeBranch. Jones. Bob Ladd. Jim Waddell. Jim O'Loughlin. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Um, just going through what we've done. We've done 13, 14, 15, and we have quite a few with DPW. Let's see, Diana, what do we have? One with you? Okay. And who else do we have with us tonight? No one else? All right. Diana, if you want to come down and join us. <laughs> uh, where was uh, her? She's at three. three. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we have one wa warrant article this year, and it is um, we're asking for one hundred forty-eight thousand two hundred twenty-six dollars. This um, warrant article will come out of the. Re recreation fund that we have mm -hmm. so there's no tax impact to the community but we're hoping to um, fix the access road that's right by tuck field i don't know if you've driven over that road lately but it's a nightmare the uh, meeting house green road mm -hmm. goes around the historical society so we're asking for money for that we also want to purchase a scarifier which is a piece of equipment for the parks department which we badly need um, as you know, our parks are quite heavily used, and the one thing that we don't have is artificial turf, so we need to take care of the grass. And, what, what is a scarifier? Uh, it's a, a piece of equipment that's a multi-use equipment, but its major function is to get rid of thatch and, key, and um, allow air into the soil so that your grass continues to grow properly. Is it a right properly. on thing? You right on it? I, no, it's a push thing. Oh, boy. Um, we also um, are ready to purchase a, a replacement bus for our community. Our bus is 13 years old. It's had a lot of wear and tear last year. Um, it left us up in Portland with people on it. and It's had a number of problems with the gas tank, and a lot of the problems are rust. Are rust. So um, it's time to re It's usually things like that are replaced every six or seven years, and like I said, it's 13 years old, so it's time to replace that. So we're asking for money to replace that, and then um, we also want to re-roof the tuck building and replace this as much siding as possible on the side of that building. There's a few pieces that have been cracked from falls and people hitting it and stuff, wear and tear on that. And the doors at the tuck building are commercial doors, and we've tried to bring out um, a locksmith to just fix the doors, and a locksmith isn't going to be able to do the job, we found out. No one can get into the tuck building. We can't get into the front doors. My key has not worked in a year. <laughs> it's, it's, it is laughable. I can't even get into the tuck building. We can go through the back right now. It's There's snow on the ground, but you, can, you have to go through the back door of the tuck building, and that's a challenge still. So it's an issue for the door, not the lock. So we're asking to replace those doors this year. And the last item that we are looking for um, in this warrant article is to is $17,000 and some change to um, 
put some money into the Kids Kingdom <coughs> playground. There's a lot of pe pieces of equipment. Small. This is just for the smaller pieces, the handrails and um, things of that nature that have come into disrepair that need to be fixed. And what year was that built? That is a 20-year-old playground, oh. which is over its age limit and also. Know, <laughs> excuse me. I know you've band-aided it. It's a very popular playground, though, so I. It does it is a popular playground? I have to. Uh, I have to keep it up to as best that I can. But it's time to replace that playground too. But right now we're replacing pieces of it. Okay. And as I said again, this is one hundred forty-eight thousand two hundred twenty three hundred twenty-six dollars, and it's out of the recreation fund, so there's no tax impact on this warrant article. Do you know what the balance of the rec fund is right now? Do you know that off? <laughs> You'd have to look at November's report. We have it's more than that. It's it much more than that. that. Mm. It's much more than that in there. You got the uh, revolver in the back, I think. Yeah, uh, Jerry, that's you a have different your fund. November report. It should be in the, on the one of the last like three pages, I believe, the very end. Emergency medical, I have private detail, cable committee, rec fund. Yeah. That's a different fund. Looks like. Oh, that's, fund. That's, yeah, that's the revolving true. fund. Yeah. Okay. This is the fund that um, the money is generated from the 20% from the oh. parking lot revenues. I don't know where that is. Yeah. I, can, I just looked at those two. I just can't remember how much will be left over if this is spent. <coughs> Chrissy, do you have that? I don't know. I have November. We looked at it with her. And, um, I have November report. No, it's not on her. She's right. And then we looked and when she had uh, proposed this article, all three, Fred and her herself, and I all looked at it. I just can't remember what it was now. That was a while ago. There was quite a bit of money <coughs> still left over. A sizable amount of cash. Yeah, we weren't, we weren't bankrupting it by any means. Okay, well. If you like, I can get you that info tomorrow. I will trust no tax impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Anything else you want to add, though? That's it for now, I guess. <laughs> all right. Jim, we're going to start with you tonight. I'm all set. Yeah, I, I, I just, the access road. I know. It's got to be done. I know. Uh, you over there, little kids coming in for their soccer games and stuff. Uh, <coughs> Scarifier, you know, you need. Uh, the bus, aren't you guys using that to go up to the ski area this year uh, on Sundays? Yeah, Renee just put it in the shop to make sure that you yeah. can take it. <laughs> so you're, you're transporting people for two-hour tri trip yep. up and two-hour back. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that's a real safety issue. Yep. So uh, I'm all set. I'm, yeah. No questions. Thank thanks. You. All set. All set. All set. Thanks. Carry on. Good. How many miles on the bus die? Uh, Over 100,000? No. No. It does more, well, it does more localish trips, like an hour trips. Yeah. But it does a lot of them. That kind of thing. And it's, it's exterior is deteriorating, the rust or what? Yeah. In fact, last a uh, couple months ago, Renee was putting gas in the bus and it was flowing out onto the ground. And really, he was gas like tank? horrified. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, that had to be fixed. Public Works took care of that for us. And like Did I you said, have to put much uh, dollars into that? In the last this last year, we have. How much? I don't know off the top of my head how much money, but enough that it's significant that we. It's time to replace this thing, you know. It's, it's 13 years old. What would you do with me? <laughs> Replace you. <laughs> you need a gas tank. People aren't replaceable, but things are. <laughs> yeah, that's Article 72. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> And like I said, on a general maintenance schedule, things get replaced. These things of uh, pieces of equipment like that get replaced every six or seven years. So it's passed out to its time too. Yeah, I, I took my my grandchildren to the kids' kingdom, and I did notice there were certain pieces missing. Or, yeah. You know, and uh, overall it was in good condition, but there were certain certain apparatuses that were lacking. But they had a couple of years ago. Yeah, and truthfully, stuff starts to. Um, as far as the playground goes, stuff starts to lose its um, safety standards when you start losing pieces, and so we can't have that. No, no, I, I know, I agree. I agree with that. It's a no tax impact. Correct. Uh, right. 
and Jerry, it, it's uh, as of November, it was 128, 134.17 was left. In total? Wrong account. Wrong account? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know I where, that. Where, is that, <laughs> where is that normally located? That's the revolving account. That's uh, a, yeah, <clears throat> that's a revolver, but where is that thing located in the budget, or or is it in the budget? You know, that surplus finance. you have from the... Yeah, I always ask the finance department for that number. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the budget. It's in the audit. <laughs> yeah, we carry that around in our hip pocket. <laughs> so is it a like a fund, like a like a yeah. trust fund? Is that what it is? Sort of. It's a fund. Like every year, we make X amount of money in the parking lots, yeah. and we take twenty percent. Yeah, of that, that pours amount. into a fund. Right. And we've had one year in the past where I had a warrant article that didn't pass, so we had a surplus of eighty thousand about that year on top of it. And then the next year we had a smaller um, item done, and so now we've got quite a surplus of money. So I wanted to take care of a, quite a few things that we desperately need to do in one fell swoop, and had plenty of money to do it with, and still left a surplus in there. there I'm done. Rich. No questions. I only have a couple of points. Um, one is when we originally purchased this vehicle several years ago, I was adamantly against it for the reason that I don't think we should be in the transportation business for the town because of the liability. Like you just said, you got stuck in Portland. If you had a bunch of senior citizens, you took them to Boston or Portland like that, and you're stuck because the vehicle you're in is broken down, you have a severe problem. And if you're, God forbid, if you're ever in an accident with that thing, so I think it should be done commercially, period. So I'm adamantly against the $75,000 for that. And when it comes to the uh, uh, park, I think we could probably do that for a little less. So overall, I'm definitely against Article 23. Well, for the record, we've been in a car, in a bus accident on a commercial bus coming home from Boston. Mm -hmm. And we've also um, been left places that they've had to send us another bus too, so. That's also true, but you don't have same, the liability issue there. Same issue. <coughs> my okay. My only question is, is, it seems to me on the bus, it would make more sense to rent a school bus mm -hmm. each time that you needed it. It depends on the, the trip. Some, some trips we do provide either a school bus or a coach bus. If we have, say, Red Sox tickets, you know, we have 55 tickets or 70 tickets. Um, but then we have other trips for the yeah, scene, mostly for the scene. It would be a lot cheaper. So. Well, it wouldn't if we had a trip for 15, for 14 people. It would be a lot more costly to get well, those buses. Well, how often do you have that? A lot. We have a lot of those. We have a lot of luncheon trips and a lot of trips um, to theater productions and stuff of that nature. We actually use the smaller bus more than we do the big bus. All right. Um, who's doing the work on the tuck field? Who's if doing? You, yeah, oh, the uh, parks? Gonna, parks? Right. Bob Fuller is our parks foreman. So he's going to do the work for the 148000 No. No, the 148000 Right. It's the buys total. all of these things. Grand total. Oh, it's the grand okay. total. That's just the grand total. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. The scarifier is the one piece of equipment for the parks Scarifier. department for fourteen thousand. Yeah. I think a satchel would be more appropriate. Um, as far as the doors and like that, you couldn't replace the door. That's we tried. We asked. We went to the locksmith first, thinking that was the issue. And the locksmith. We've had two of them down there. That said, we can't do anything with this. The issue is the doors. I guess the way the building has settled, the doors don't fit anymore. Don't ask me. I don't know. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a locksmith. We'll learn that one. But they—they yeah. they are the ones that told us we can't fix this. This, is, this issue is the is the doors, the commercial doors. So, yeah, I don't get that. And I'm with Mr. Pierce as far as the bus goes. Uh, I'm all set. Thanks. I'm all set. Okay. Again. Okay. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, through you to. A uh, con contracting expert, a contractor, Mike, a scarifier, to me, is that the right terminology to use for this type of equipment? Well, I'm, I'm not certain that she isn't talking about an aerator. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, 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 it is. Or dethatching? It, it takes the plugs out. 
No. Loose as a soil. No, we have one of those. So you're going to detach. This it. is a different piece of equipment that will do a, a number of things. Are you dethatching with this? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you call a scarifier? Yeah. Ahead? This this piece of equipment also moves um, ball field mix, so yeah. we'll be using this piece of equipment to um, fix the infields of the, all so the ball fields. So it's a grater with a scarifier yeah. in front of yep. it to loosen it, it, the soil as you drag exactly. it. Exactly. Yep. It does a number of things well, actually. It, it, what? As then you call it at the right thing. A scarifier would be what you have on a grater that goes in front of the blade to pull the rocks up and loosen the soil, and then you smooth it up after you go over it. Yep. And you're trying to do that in the base lines where the ball field mix is, and also use it on the lawn. Yep. That is exactly. So she's called it the right thing. All right. Huh? But it's but it would be a miniature one compared to to a road grader. Well, I, when I say that word, I think of the one that they chew, when they chew up the asphalt. Well, is it that? Well, that's no. a reclaimer. All right, that's okay. <laughs> right. Well, then I'm, I'm <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I'm going to shut up. You don't need one of those, Richard. All right. But scar <laughs> scarifier. And you don't want to buy one of those because they're no, big. But scarifier is the right term to use. Yeah, for she's, she's calling it right. right. Yeah. All right. I've After I've you get a definition of what it is. Here from the expert. to loosen the soil with a type of cultivator. And then smooth it after. Madam Chair, I'd like to move Article 23 for the uh, the warrant. Before we do, anyone else have anything else to add? Okay. Is that a recommendation or not? I said I am moving move. Article 23 as written to the warrant. Okay. Second. Thank you, Richard. All those in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Jalapa and mm -hmm. Do you want me to get you that true figure that's left in that? I got the note, guy. Okay, I'll get that to you tomorrow. Okay, I appreciate it. Or get send it to the chairman, and she can email it to us. Yeah. Oh, you want me to do more work? <laughs> or you can email it to us all. I don't care. Okay. Or you could put it on the web. Okay, I'll do oh, something. We'll leave it well, somehow here. I will get you that information. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. You're welcome. Okay. Well. Not seeing anybody else. Keith, come on down. We're going to be visiting a while. I think this brings us back to Article 16. 16. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Keith Noyes. My deputy, Chris Jacobs, we have five warrant articles tonight to discuss with you. Article 16, equipment purchases. <coughs> Article 17, improvements to Exeter Road. Article 18, the downtown drainage project. Article 19, the road improvement capital reserve. And Article 20, the highway block grant. We'll start with Article 16, which is our DPW equipment purchases, and I'm just going to talk a few minutes about it, and then I'm going to turn it in general, and then I'm going to turn it over to Chris, and he's going to go over each piece of equipment and uh, talk about them individually. Um, what I want to say to you is that um, DPW equipment and vehicles are every bit as important as in essential to our operations as the fire trucks are to the fire department, police cruisers are to the police department, animal control um, vehicles, and so forth. Um, I've been in this business for 29 years, and I can tell you this, that um, providing our employees with good equipment to work with has payoffs. Yeah, it's it's expensive. Our equipment is expensive. But the four pieces of equipment that we're looking to replace this year is not like a, uh, a car for me or for Chris or just for a passenger car uh, for just getting around town. They're all involved with snow fighting and they're all getting up in age. Uh, as far as the maintenance cost of it goes, uh, I know there's been comments, well, with one truck there was only $4,000 spent, but what I want to get across is it's more than just the annual maintenance cost. For instance, I get quite often I get calls from residents upset that while our guys are plowing snow, 
you're hitting the mailbox or, or, or cutting into the lawn and, and whatever. And these are 28, 25 year old pieces of equipment that if it was in the private sector could be, I believe, get antique license plates on them. But we all know that when you buy a new vehicle and you start driving it, it's nice and tight. When you're driving down the road, you feel good about it. It smells good, it looks good, and it's tight. Um, and that's the way it is with our vehicles when we first purchase them. But I got to tell you, when they're 28 years old, and I've driven these, not this particular truck or these, but I've driven, I've plowed snow with the larger trucks before. And as they get older, they have a lot more play in them. So when the driver is operating it on our tight roads, and, and this, ro this town has a lot of tight roads and dead ends where we don't even have turnarounds, and you're trying to drive it and keep it straight, it's hard because of the play in the vehicle that has come up over time. That's just one small aspect of it. But the other part is we don't have a lot of spares. We have just really a certain number of vehicles. They all have their place in what we do. And finally, the other important point is that we've worked hard to look at our entire fleet and come up with a long-term replacement schedule. And we've got about 50 pieces of equipment between uh, staff vehicles to uh, sewer suckers, uh, <laughs> the um, sweeper, the garbage uh, collectors, uh, compactors, uh, trailers. We've got a lot of pieces of equipment. So part of what we do is when we develop a long-term plan, and I have, we have a 20-year plan that projects it out 20 years, but more importantly, we look at six years. And right now, assuming that we get this article passed and we're not rolling over these expenses into another year, we're looking at, for essential pieces of equipment, and... Um, um, in 2016, we're looking at $444,000. In 2017 is when we're going to have to start replacing our, some of our, uh, our trash trucks. Almost a million dollars. Following year, 2018, $845,000. $699,000 in the, the following year, and then $325,000. Because what has happened, and has happened with much of the infrastructure in this town, is that it's been kicked down the road. And I just really would ask that you have an open mind and you look at this, that one, it's an essential piece of equipment. This is not looking at some luxury piece of equipment. These are tools that our employees need to do their job and do it, do it good and do it efficiently. They cost a lot of money. But we are doing better maintenance now than we ever have. There's been a question about how come our maintenance vehicle maintenance cost has risen considerably over the last year. The reason is because now we're taking care of more equipment. We're, 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 that, that most of that is associated with materials. So now we've got a great team going where we have two full-time permanent um, uh, mechanics. We have a supervisor that's overseeing the maintenance, scheduling the maintenance, and we have a part-time person that's also coming in. We're taking over the, all of the, or most of the, all of the maintenance of the police department cruisers, which I know has got to be, in, in the end, saving time for them because they would have had to take vehicles out of town. So there's been a lot going on to try to get caught up so that we're not looking at large spikes in costs for vehicle replacements, but just as importantly, that our employees that are out there in the middle of a snowstorm that are trying to do, to provide passable roads for you and the rest of the public, we can do that efficiently. And one other thing I want to mention is that, and, and Chris has taken the initiatives of this, and this is just another example of how we're really looking at our whole operation and trying to um, um, tr try to cut costs. There's two things that we've been doing, actually. One thing is that we've bought some GPS units and we've been monitoring 
the uh, plow operations for each route. And what we found is that some routes were, uh, the drivers were being, being able to complete in maybe two hours and the others in four and a half hours. Well, what we're looking at is how can we balance that out so that they're all about the same time. And, and some routes take longer than others just because of the nature of the roads. But, but, but what we're finding, it, what we're trying to do is cut back on the number of routes by balancing them out. See where we can find efficiencies in the, uh, the routing of our snow plows. The other thing is that we've now got two uh, contractors, private contractors, that are taking over a couple of routes. And by, that, by doing that, we're not have to buy in the capital equipment to have on hand to do those routes. We are somewhat limited by the union contract as far as you just can't go and privatize all the routes, but we're picking away <laughs> at it and we're looking at it at where it makes sense. So all in all, what I'm trying to say is that uh, I can assure this committee in the town that we're really working hard at making our, our operation more efficient, but also <coughs> expressing the need to give our employees good tools to work with so they can do a better job in their performance and efficiency of what they're doing. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris. He's going to talk about each piece, piece of equipment and explain uh, why we're looking to replace those pieces of equipment. Thank you. Um, of the, f the four pieces of equipment, the first one we, we call Unit 24. It's used in the sewer and drain department. It's a three-quarter ton uh, truck with a utility body on it. It's outfitted for <coughs> maintaining the sewer system is basically what it is. It's the primary uh, on-call vehicle other than, than Toby's truck. Um, it's the reason why it has a utility body on it is it's fitted with uh, all the equipment they need to pop manhole covers, uh, remove obstructions, uh, take measurements. So this thing is a, it's what uh, Bobby Walker drives. It's a frontline vehicle. So it's a pretty rugged piece of equipment. The reason why it's made it to the uh, top of the list is it cost us $5,000 this past year to maintain in the middle of the summer the transmission went. Uh, the body is, is starting to rust out uh, to the point of no return, the, the utility box itself is starting to rust out. Um, so with a $5,000 repair bill on that one, it is reaching the end of its useful life. Uh, it has been there, uh, let me see, it's a 2005, so we've gotten 10 years out of it. The second truck that we're looking, to, oh, by the way, it also use, we use it to plow snow with. Uh, Bobby Walker's assigned uh, areas off of uh, Ancient Highway. Uh, like Beach Plum Way, uh, because he's the only one that, could, being here for 32 years, remembers where all the mailboxes and this guy says put it there, and that guy says no, put the snow there. So he he keeps us out of mailbox trouble over there, and um, that's the that's the right size or right piece of equipment for those particular routes that he's assigned. Uh, the second piece of equipment is a 2001 uh, one-ton dump truck. Uh, with snow plow attached. They're again um, a little beefier than that three quarter ton that Bobby's driving. Um, using it on things like it could, it could plow Island Path, it could plow m most of the streets that size in the, in the town. The reason why we like that one ton truck versus let's say a six wheel dump truck is its turning radius. As you know, there's an awful lot of tight beach community areas. Um, it, can, it can maneuver in those particular areas. What so number is that on your roster? <laughs> that is unit number 36. 36, all right. Last year, the maintenance cost on that one was a whopping $2,400. Uh, the third major piece of equipment, or actually the third and the fourth, are our two Mac uh, six-wheel dump trucks. Uh, as Keith said, both of them qualify for, uh, I believe, uh, antique plates now. Um, they are both Macs. Uh, we spent all summer um, painting and scraping uh, to keep the bodies together, um, replace the wood sides on the, on the dump bodies. Um, they are very expensive to maintain. 
Unit 42 this past year was $6,500, and Unit 45 was another $2,500. Going back to the question that we always, we've always we been asked by you, we've been asked by the Board of Selectmen, why a $97,000 maintenance line? Those four vehicles alone are 16, just a $16,600 and some change, or 17% of that $97,000. And also the other reason why the maintenance line is much higher is the three sidearm packers. Nothing, nothing catastrophic like a transmission or an engine went on those vehicles. They're what, two, three years old? But they're used day in and day out. Just the three of those this year used $18,406. So when we elected to pick up trash, our maintenance line went up automatically. Had to. Uh, they run through tires like there's no tomorrow. They scuff them due to the number of turns that they have to make. So they don't get the mileage down the road. They just get the time on tires. So they eat up tires. Um, days like today where it's cold, the hydraulic systems don't work on them. They're, gonna, they're, they're popping hoses left and right. A lot of the work that goes into maintaining those trucks is all hydraulics. I only bring that up because it relates to the overall maintenance budget. It relates to that we need to think about cycling these trucks out if we don't want to see the maintenance line keep going up and keep going up and up. Because as they get older, they're just going to get more expensive. Um, that's all I had to really say about those four vehicles, and I at this point would entertain questions. I'm sure you have some. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I have. Um, as far as the sidearms go, that one has always bothered me because every time that I talk about sidearms, we got to talk about. I the know. Well, when you were bringing up, the I only brought it up because it relates to the cost of maintenance. Um, um, this is the first I've heard about that, so I'll skip on to the next one. Um, the maintenance. Um, you need two. You have two full-time me mechanics now, right? And one part-time. In one part, we've always had two mechanics, but right, we're well, way not really. We, we've had I, I refer to it as one and a half because we've had one full mechanic and one mechanic helper in the past. In the past, whereas now we have two professional mechanics. Okay, um, is there any now? This is something that I have a problem with as far as the CIP committee goes. We have not seen any <coughs> plans for replacing any of these vehicles. I mean, I know you might have a plan in your own head or your own department, but we haven't seen anything as far as a plan going forward to Never replace seen these. That? Yeah, well, I say we haven't okay. seen it. Um, I could be wrong, but I thought that I provided that information to the CIP committee. Um, in the past. Okay. Well, okay, then that's why we know it's hurt. Right. Uh, I'm done. Now, these trucks are all stored outside. If I recall last year, you were trying to get a shed to put them on the. The two, two Macs are installed, stored inside. Yeah. Um, they're inside right now, trying to keep warm because they'll be needed in the morning. <laughs> trying to keep warm. Uh, the Truck 31 is outside right now with wings and plows attached, and 24 sits outside of the sewer and drain building uh, for Bobby to grab first thing in the morning. The other thing I had raised in the past is it seems to me that, you know, if you leased your equipment, it wouldn't have to require a budget. It would be a flat line, and they'd roll over automatically. <coughs> I've looked at that in the past in my prior job. We, we, we experimented with that. But in the very end, 
it's not cost effective. Unless you do a lease purchase program where you lease it for a number of years and then you end up owning it, but that you don't just lease it and then give it back to them. Um, but we, we've evaluated that and it just doesn't, the economics just don't seem to work on something like that unless that's the only way you can get it. I mean, that's the only way you can get the funding for it is if you just put it yeah. out for a little this bit. This way you, you, you have a warrant article of voters don't pass it, you know. Well, I think don't, I'll look for Fred to correct me if I'm wrong, but if we had, let's say we had a lease program for six vehicles. The, to the because it would it would require a vote of the tax be part of the budget it'd be a flat cost it would be not until it's approved because it's a multi because of the lease payments year to year it's something to vote and a commitment to future boards of selectmen to have to make that payment because it's a long term contract I believe it would have to go to the board through the town meeting process it's considered debt it's considered debt thank you supposed to supposed right to so that. it doesn't it doesn't alleviate that vote you know, I only have a couple comments and one is the last three or four years that I recall we've heard complaints about the pickup trucks with the snow piles so I'm not too crazy about that if you had another if you had two one tons there I'd be more enthused about this we're not looking at we don't it. have any pickup trucks other than the three-quarter and we don't describe that as a pickup truck that's a lot beefier than a three-quarter the three-quarter is that we are holding off just so you know we're, until we get done with this study that we're looking at all the routes you know, there is no half-ton pickup trucks in the budget and how about three-quarter ton pickup trucks? Well, the three-quarter three-quarter ton truck has to be three-quarter ton to be able to carry that utility body with all those material uh, th that equipment that we're talking about. So it's a multi-purpose truck. We're not using it just for snow plowing, but there are roads around town that he deals with that need a little bit more than a half ton but one ton just is a little bit too big because of the r t turning radius and I've plowed some of the roads in this town and I can t testify that some of these roads you can barely get a one half ton around let alone you know a, a one ton. Well the reason why I'm voicing that is because people complained about the pickups piling the roads. They said they did a quote some of the complainers not a very good job and I, I'm just voicing that because I know when a plow goes by my place it's usually one of the bigger trucks sure. and it gets it off the road I am not in favor of half-ton pickups plowing roads other than certain circumstances. But you don't have a half-ton on here. I'm saying I don't like the three-quarter ton. If we'd have two one-tons, I'd be more enthused is what I'm trying to right. say. Right. But what I'm telling you is that by have, what we try to do is get multi-purpose trucks so that we don't have, we have so many plow routes that we have to cover. I believe yeah. we have 22 plow routes. Yeah. So by what, I'm tr what we're trying to do is use multi-purpose so that that vehicle is not just being used for snow plowing or it's not just being used to haul equipment around mm -hmm. that this particular vehicle is a section to the rule where it needs to carry a, a larger utility body that's got the side bins and the rear bins mm -hmm. to carry all of his equipment so this is a little bit out of the ordinary of what we'd normally be doing so a one ton wouldn't work it probably would not work as, as with bo like bobby walker's route james street and then beach plum way the only thing that's going to make it down Beach Plum Way and be able to get back out in the end and not wreck everybody's shrubbery and other things, mailboxes, granite posts, mm -hmm. is a beefy three-quarter ton truck. Okay. Um, I have streets like you look at Auburn Ave and Auburn Ave Extension, they're only 14 feet wide. They've only got 12 feet of, I can't put one of my one tons with a wing on it down that street because it can't even turn the corner okay I got you I, I'm so that. so we're I'm all set with that okay I just have one more question and I'll shut up uh, Mack trucks if I remember correctly were built to last forever they're really good trucks so what my question is in that area what are you going to replace them with you're going to find something that's as good and reliable as a Mack truck I'd love to buy to replace these with Mack trucks, but we'd be looking at a lot more money. Uh -huh. So I believe we're looking at internationals right now. We're using the the same standard that the states use in their international trucks. Uh, well, they're they're better than like a Ford, but they're not going to be as right. expensive or beefy as a a Mack truck. But if you use the Mack and they say it costs twice as much money, but it lasts twice as long. 
I wouldn't say that it would last twice as long. I would say it would last longer, but parts are more expensive and so forth. And we're so just the economics wouldn't justify it? Not in our opinion. Okay. When we look at that we got probably a million dollars pieces of equipment and we can't, you know, I, I mean, it's like the town of Greenland years ago experimented with having Mercedes as their police cruisers. Yeah. Nice, nice deal. But in the end, it just didn't pay off, you know. I mean. I understand. No, I, I was just wondering if you could find something as the quality. Mr. Pierce, we're, we're going to try. Okay. The yeah. guys uh, met with Mike Pluff the other day, two of my staff. They heard his concerns with respects to Mac vehicles. Mm -hmm. They're on the phone most of the day. Mm -hmm. um, we find that Mac still makes a 10-wheeler, but to be honest with you, they don't make a 6-wheeler. And when somebody wants to take a Mac and put it, frame it down to a 6-wheeler size, put this, that size box, frame and plow on it, they actually cut the frame, re-weld the thing back together. Oh, wow. Okay? We are calling <coughs> Excuse the me. cost of one and a half of these will buy one Mac probably outfitted. And I agree with Mike Plupp. If, the, if you'll give us the money, we'd love to drive Macs. Well, okay. if they and we're going to look at it. If they lasted from 1988, well, that's, that's a clue all by itself. They lasted, but Unit 42, we drove it up to the Mac dealer in Manchester mm -hmm. last week mm -hmm. because the throttle didn't work. It's run off of hydraulics. They said it was ready. They fixed it. They had to manufacture the parts because they can't get the parts anymore. Oh, wow. Okay? We got it back on the road, and it got up to second gear on Route 101. We got off the first exit, brought the truck back. Doesn't work. When they robbed hydraulic pressure from t for the throttle, it took away hydraulic pressure for the transmission, <laughs> and they had it for a couple more days. The bill for those... Uh, well, the bill for those, that was, uh, let's see, $1,944.38, $810.50, $1,000 for the truck. And a new truck of that same caliber would be about what? Well, just the truck alone is going to be more than $150,000, and then you still have to put the plow, the wing, and the sander on it. I mean, the one you're going to replace in this one article is going to be about how much? $150,000. Right. So you're looking at not even 10% of the cost to re replace major items. So uh, cost effective, it'd be, sound like you'd be better off to keep the Mack truck, but I'm, I'm happy with that. I understand you're going to try to do your best. Well, our concern is if this occurred in a week, in a, right now we're in a, uh, not much snow, but really cold. Mm -hmm. What if it occurred during a really snow and not, not as much cold, and we got, you know, the three inches of rain that we got in December was three, 30 inches of snow. This truck would have died. Probably. I won't knock And then me. major routes wouldn't get done. Oh, ADAs, I, I like the fact it's lasted this long. I can't debate that at all, but I just want to make sure we're going to replace it with something we think will last and, almost and as long. I just want to take that opportunity to describe how our decision-making process goes. We include the mechanics, the supervisors that are overseeing the operation. Mm -hmm. It's not Keith out there saying, do this and do this. <laughs> I, I, I feel my management style is I try to hire good people, and then I put confidence in them unless they give me reason not to mm -hmm. and and it's like you know Bob Tucker tell, uh, not Bob Tucker uh, fr uh, fr Frank Swift tells me that when they bought the Packers he was never even consulted with that that was crazy because he's the one that's got to manage those we've changed that so that they're all included in these recommendations mm -hmm. to, to get the biggest bang for the buck for the time we're not just going for the Mercedes we're, we're trying to find we're trying to balance out the need with the cost. I, I don't think I'm trying to say that, Keith, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Public Works no, Director. I'm sorry that I said that. I'm saying, uh, should have said Mr. Director, but back to this, I'm saying we should buy a Mack truck. Well, so I'm not I saying you shouldn't. Right. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not I against like buying a better quality truck vehicle, that's for sure. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. I'm looking at the uh, real vehicle equipment roster. Yep. And I think when you initially talked about these replacement vehicles, you pointed out you were going to replace 15, 23. Uh, well, anyway, what it looks like is that you've dropped a couple that, um, that you talked initially about replacing and picked up a couple more. 23's been deadlined. It's out in the backyard. All right, so or it'll be used as a trade-in. 
All right, and how about 15? 15's rusting out. The shocks fell off the mounts, got it welded back on, and it has now has a wooden rear bumper. You can, it's the only one in the fleet that does. Um, that will probably be traded in. Um, the discussion came up earlier this year, why weren't they put in the auction? Uh, my answer back to staff was, we get more money for trading them in than we do for if we just sold them at the auction. So these two trucks will be used as trade-ins? Right. So not we're, we're not inclined to replace any of those, and that's why you'll see some of them, are, they're not even on the schedule to be replaced. But if they have a minute amount of life out of them, mm -hmm. we're using them. And we're trying to cut down, believe me, on our number of the inventory. We're, we're looking at that. That's why we're using the GPS units. We are actively trying to figure out ways to cut down on uh, our inventory of vehicles. So we're either using them for multi-purpose or looking at privatization of certain plow routes or whatever. We're, we're doing what we can within the confines of union contracts and, and just, you know, financial issues. So when you look at the, the proposal for the new trucks, like say truck number, 40, uh, number 42 is the one you're going to replace. Right. Wouldn't you be re using that truck as a trade-in? Yes. Yes. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're not, this isn't going to, like, add new vehicles. We're not looking gonna, to add to It isn't going to increase the fleet. It's going to replace one for one, and in some cases, two for one. And 42 and 45, I see that there are dump trucks. These are max. These are you know, must be your bi the biggest vehicles, the ones with the wing yes. plows and mm -hmm. so on, right? Okay. So from forty to forty-five, I guess uh, these are the big the big boys, the big boys. right? The big dump trucks, right? That you use and with the wing plows that take care of the the biggest streets, right? And they're multi-purpose. We right. all gravel and stone. Right, but I mean uh, these are the the powerhouses for the correct the bigger roads and. So you're, you're looking to replace two of those, right? right. Okay. All right, thank you. I yep. just wanted to see how this roster was going and so on. Thank sure. you. Hi, guys. Jerry. Hi. I, you know, your total requests tonight total up to about a million seven. You take all your articles. And um, I haven't added up the impact dollar-wise to an average home, but... Let me ask you, you got four vehicles, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know a Mac from a, you know, whatever, okay? I'm not a, an expert in this particular area. Or, however, uh, I ask you, what are the costs of each one of these vehicles? Because you, you, you give me a total price of 382. What does each one of them cost approximately? The, uh, the two trucks that were the 42 and 45? The two, la the two last ones you've got stated in your last in, in the last in your last uh, Go ahead. itemizations. Sure. Um, so for 24, taking into account a four thousand dollar trade in value, we're looking at about forty one thousand dollars for one of the one of the one tonners. No, that's a three quarter ton. What? That's three quarter ton. Three with, quarter ton with with the plow. With the plow, okay, right. would be about what? Forty-one thousand dollars. Okay. What else? Do you, what else can you tell? Number thirty-six uh, with the plow, and I believe it has a wing, mm -hmm. um, is uh, about forty-nine thousand dollars. Okay. In number forty-two, Wait, in number forty-five. Let me, let me, hang on. Hey, okay. You got you got a two thousand and five, three-quarter ton utility truck and body, a snow plow. You're saying to replace that would be a forty-one. Forty-one k. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the two thousand and one one-ton dump truck and snow plow. What's that? How much for that? Forty-nine. Forty-nine k. Okay. Can I stop right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just going, I, and I just want to get out of my confusion here. That's number thirty-six, and I'm looking on the replacement schedule, and that's giving us a price of eighty-five thousand. I want to make sure we're on board with the same numbers here. That's what it costs new. The Eighty-five thousand. Uh, well, so we're getting used. I can tell you where the discrepancy is. I'd like somebody to. Oh. Yeah. The truck that you're talking about, thirty-six, is yeah. a was a one-ton dump truck. They cut the sides off it because they rotted out. It's got a plow on it, just a snow plow. Probably a nine-footer. 
the truck they want to replace it with, that I was told the other day, is a one ton, yeah, twelve foot rack body to go with a chipper. Right. With a plow in a wing. Correct. Now you just got done telling us that you can't turn around and place go mm -hmm. with a long truck. Right. And you're gonna buy it And that's why we don't you send that truck to that location. Right. But you're gonna send it somewhere else and it's still not gonna turn around. We're gonna send it on routes where it currently has the maneuverability. You, you want to buy the same it to use with a chipper. How long do you use the chipper? How many hours is the, the chipper got? The, the other reason we're asking for the rack body is when we have to move all of our barricades down for the July 4th, instead of putting them in six or seven trucks, we might be able to put more of them in this one. But that's not going to stand mm -hmm. up plowing snow. Mm -hmm. It's not going to stand up. Mm -hmm. You're going in the wrong direction. We could sit here all night. I know. We could. I better kill it down. So we won't. Go around, go around the room. I'll tell you what I think. Okay, okay. Let's see. Can, I, can, I, can I? Well, maybe we ought to defer yeah, to Mike on this. I've got a lot of time uh, in this and I, a lot of work. In this. Mm. Why don't I defer my continued conversation to Mike? And and I want to hear what he has to say because what I'm driving at is we got four vehicles here. I want to understand the cost of each, and then if I ask them, which ones are the biggest need for them, because of the need that they have. Or the or the condition of the vehicles, which ones would they be? But I'm going to defer to you, Mike. When Jerry, oh. Jerry, if I can just answer that one question. Yeah. We came up with a capital CIP plan. Yeah. We're trying to avert disaster. We're trying to avert disaster out in year 2017 or 2018, when because you're going to ask, somebody's going to ask me that same question then. What truck do you really need? And the decision that voters are going to have to make and the Board of Selectmen is going to have to make is what's more important, sidearm packer to pick up trash, refuse trailer to get the trash up to waste management or wherever it's needed, or a six-wheel <coughs> dump truck? I, I don't know about 2017, Chris. I know you, I'm well, looking at these right here. I know you are. You were, the reason why your they, back was to the wall and you were in a corner and you needed your most needed vehicle or two, which ones would they be? I'd take the two six-wheel dump trucks, and I'd roll in the hope that the transmission lasts on 24, and I'd nurse along 36, if I had to. But the whole reason we space some of these vehicles out like this, and, and we could probably, you know, it's, it's a chart. You could go six ways to Sunday if I gave you all the same data you could probably come up with different charts in different years and that's great but this is what we've come up with to avert a real problem out several years from now when the vehicle replacement is going to be nine hundred and eighty seven thousand or eight hundred and forty five thousand or seven hundred thousand this number here that we're proposing to you tonight will look like it'll be the more amenable and, and somebody will say well why didn't you propose these vehicles to be you know replaced back in 2015 and I just want to say also Jerry and I, I just want to re-emphasize re this and with all due respect to Mike Pluff and I know he's got years of experience in this in, in trucking but we're looking at the people that are orchestrating these snowstorms Frank Swift, Toby Spainhauer they're the ones that live and breathe this. They're the ones that live and have to make the snowstorms work. And you know what? We get very few complaints. When we know we've got 14,500 or whatever it is, people in this, I get myself probably four, three, three to four complaints a, a storm on our performance. That's not bad. That's about a, a hundredth of a one percent of the potential complaints out of there. So our guys are doing pretty good, and, and, and a big part of that is, and I've been in there because either Chris or I are in there during this, to listen to that communication on the storms of putting this truck there and that truck there, and how it's drifting down there, but it's not drifting there, or that truck's broke down, so I've got to replace it. I'm relying on the people that are the frontline engineers or orchestrators to come up with these recommendations on what they need for what pieces of equipment. And I have full confidence in their assessment. And they aren't just spending money.
believe me, I reemphasize to them that we've got to watch our costs because of the, the, the tax situation and the general economy. Thank you for that information. Uh, it just appears to me that you've gone grocery shopping here and four vehicles in one warrant article without stipulating the cost of each. I, I just gave it to you. Well, well, we only got half of them. We only got half. Okay. I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to, and the other, and the other thing is, is that, well, it's, it's, it's cost, but it's, uh, I don't have, uh, I mean, I, I suppose I could go to the appendix and look up the mileage and all of that stuff, but these repair costs, are, are these, these maintenance costs are not knockout blows, those figures you're quoted. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Uh, and, and, uh, I, I just, I, I need to hear about Mike's, uh, insight on this, so I'm going to defer the rest of the conversation until I hear him. But before we move on, can we finish off the numbers on the Sure. Truck? Yeah, we'll get the two of them. Yeah, got the two. the, the other two, the two big trucks are $145,000. Each? Yeah. Thank and you. And that's with the trade. Thank you very much. The last two? Yeah. yeah the two max. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam oh, International. Can I just jump back a little bit on that? And I'm looking again at the list that was furnished. And cost new on those was that a cost new when we bought them I believe so to the best of our record you know that we have from that year from that so time. that's the difference in price from new cost I mean it would be this is something I'm going to throw out in general I don't know how many times I've asked a question throughout the budget period and I've gotten an answer of well I don't know to the best of my ability when I, I would suggest to all department heads, to the town manager, to everybody involved in this process, when you come looking for money, don't give us an answer of to the best of our ability. We're depending on your expertise in a lot of these manners. And to advocate for or against this, in fairness, we need to know the real numbers. This is not petty cash. This is only one warrant article for a huge amount. On the serious side where you're concerned, this is equipment that you probably do need. You have the CI, a report that went to the CIP. This is the committee that is going to pass a budget and recommend or not recommend a warrant article. I think we need to move a little bit higher in the food chain of getting actual numbers. I find it frustrating to be asking these questions, and this is the 11th hour before we have public hearing. And it's just, you know, and, I'm, and I apologize for any velocity this may come out in your direction, but I would say it's a general overall frustration that I've had throughout this year's budget process that department after department has come in here with, I don't have the numbers, I'll get back to you, and for the record, no one's gotten back to me with anything. All right? so. We're sitting here tonight making very profound and decisions and recommendations on what you need without having everything loaded in there that we need to endorse this. And what I'm trying to say to you, Madam Chairman, is that 28 years ago, the records weren't kept as well as we keep them today. As I've explained to you, everything, and I can only speak for the last four years that I've been here, everything is documented. Time and time again, I have to deal with issues. I just dealt with one the other day. Well, where did this agreement come from? Oh, we, we had a handshake agreement with one of the prior public works directors on this on a particular issue. I'm trying to change that to have documentation and organization of everything. So <coughs> when I said, I give you the best information I have. Pretty bad. We don't have good records back from 28 years ago. We might not even have the title to that piece of equipment, so we may have to estimate it. But what I can tell you is, and I can only speak for my tenure here, that everything that we have done since I've been here has been well documented, and I can give you exact figures. Mm -hmm. I can't speak before that time. Okay, and I appreciate that. When I'm looking at new cost here, I'm left to wonder, new cost for replacement, if we should replace it. We have because estimates. after all, this, this sheet that we have is a report card. And when I look at it, and I'll tell you where I'm going with, with these questions, 
is I'm looking at the international at $120,000 and I'm looking at the MAC at $127,000. But I'm looking at a rating of 9 on the max. The international is 10 years behind it. And we're talking about a $7,000 difference, but the rating on the internationals are already at 7 and 8, which says to me another year or two they're going to be hitting the 9s and we're going to be looking to replace those. So for that extra decade that we got at the max, I want what are the real numbers, what are the real comparisons. This doesn't do too much because I'm sitting here talking fiction. I don't have anything real to go on to weigh one thing or another. No or a presentation. So you have to understand from our standpoint, we're not here to grill you, but we're here to ascertain what would be a good value for the town. We realize that the that equipment does need to be replaced. And we all do realize that having a legitimate plan, a CIP um, program that is actually funded would keep us from these peaks that we hit every now and then where we're going over the cliff if we don't replace things and we're seeing hundreds of thousands of dollars and other years we're not spending five cents. It would be better level and I commend you on trying to put together a plan that will have us there. But realize some of these questions that you're getting from this committee is because what you're sitting there saying we don't have anything here to go by relative to these costs. And with that, it probably said enough. So, Mike, I'm going to put it in your court. And, Madam Chairman, one hour is gone now. I realize that, but this is important. Oh, yeah, I'm just saying that. Uh, well, I, get, I guess the easiest thing to say is that I'm opposed to this. The whole article, Mike? Or the whole article. The whole article. And without getting into a whole big spiel, the back is a back is a back. And these trucks have done this town very well since the day they were purchased. And they'll go a long time. One of them has 80,000 miles on it. And it has, and I'll tell you because you don't put it in your printout, 80,806 miles and it has 3,906 hours on it. And you've changed in your list, 10 the worst, condition down to number one, which would be new. And these trucks for the last probably 10 years were classified at 10. Yet they worked every year. They were repaired and they went out and worked another year. And now, because we're getting into this antique stuff, you drop the max back to nine. I, I, this one to ten to me doesn't mean anything. You you, you can't go by that. A truck with three thousand engine hours on it and eighty thousand miles. The truck is good for. Well, if you drove it over the road, you don't drive it over the road. You use it in town. But that truck's good for four or five hundred thousand miles with good care and repair. You keep it inside, they're both kept inside. As far as I know, they've been kept inside since they were new. They've never been stored outdoors. I think the approach to this, rather than buying two internationals or Peterbilts or Freightliners or any other kind of truck, should be considered and you should price the chassis, you should price <coughs> the snow plow equipment, you could buy a freak plow and wing, you could buy, there are other kinds out there, Everest and dif different manufacturers. What I got from, from the two guys that I talked to yesterday, they, they prefer the freak stuff. They have it, they like it, they use it. They're the ones that are going to do the work. They like highway sanders. They don't like some of the other kind. If you put this out to bid the way you intend to do it, you're going to get two freight liners, two internationals, two something. We're going from apples to
to something a lot less than that. These trucks, if you, if you, uh, that little sheet you had, I have the, I have the same thing you've got. You're talking about two dump trucks that you're going to get six thousand dollars for them in trade. Those trucks are worth far more money than that. Look, look at the work they did. You wanted to buy a new one last year. You didn't get either one of them. And they've worked a whole year. You've, you've got a highway department down there with no employees in it. They're all picking up recycling and trash. Can we stick to the article about discussing the... You've been running all over the place, and I can't. I, I'm against this, and I'm opposed to having it spent this year. I think there are other things that are much more top priority than this. Exeter Road would be one of them. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. So, I've said my piece. I don't. I don't think you need them this year. That's it. Anything, Mike? Here. Thank you, Mike. I wouldn't do any of them. All right. Going down one, Stephen. I have nothing to say. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Tim? I'll yield my time to anything further Mr. Porth would like to say. Did I cut you off? No, I, I, I could expound on this for two or three hours, but I won't. I don't have that much time to yield, but I'll yield what I got. <laughs> I, I think the town will be better served if they don't support mm -hmm. this this year. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Mr. Ladd. <clears throat> What I'm hearing tonight is the process needs to be changed yeah. completely. I would suggest going forward that when you present these articles, the mileage, the maintenance, the hours of use be presented to the committee for its consideration. The past maintenance and the anticipated further maintenance the cost of doing it in-house versus the cost of doing it out, uh, privatizing. Leasing to buy, leasing to not buy versus owning the equipment. And I think if this kind of data were presented, the group would be more informed to make better decisions. Uh, you may have the, be absolutely correct in what you're saying tonight, but I don't get the sense that the people at this table have enough information to support that, and I'd leave it at that. Any questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I respect what Mike says, and I respect what you guys say. <laughs> and it's it's it, it's it's a really tough situation, you know. I mean, you guys are dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis. You <coughs> up with the plan. The information might not be totally there. Uh, but I respect the opinion that it should be replaced on a, on a X amount of years to keep it rolling and keep it not coming up big. So, you know, I have no questions for you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I guess I'm going to go with them. But I respect what Mike says. I respect it totally. Jim. Well, yeah, it's a bit of a conundrum because I, I want to know Mack truck from a from a Chevy Tahoe. I mean, I, I don't pretend to, and I'm not going <coughs> to pretend to. But um, my only, I mean, we have a department head who is presenting what he feels are his needs for the department. Um, I I I think they've taken the initiative, which which I always like to see is is you're forecasting out your needs. Um, down the road so we're not hit with with one year where you say we need you know a million dollars worth of worth of equipment I think that should be taken into consideration I I can't get involved with is this one better than that one or I I don't know those things um, I, I guess what I have to rely on is the knowledge that the department head is putting this in front of the taxpayers saying this is what I need to continue to do my job the way you want me to do my job. Um, I, we, we have knowledge on the board, and obviously some people know, you know more than others, and, and you have to appreciate that. But if 
it doesn't put me in a good position because what you're saying, Mike, is probably absolutely right, but I don't know that. So I, I, I think I have to rely on, on a department head that's telling me, here's the work I put into this, here's what we need, uh, and until I get proven otherwise, I guess that's where I'd have to be on that. I'd have to take the department head for this. Okay, last questions by hand before we move to a vote. I have Is one final comment. I'm sorry? One final comment? Absolutely. The one, one item that we haven't discussed that I have to balance is uh, fairness in purchasing within the, the town. The town has an ordinance of purchasing policy. I have to, we went through this last year when we, um, and it's here with some of this equipment, when we put out last year for payloaders and backhoes, we couldn't say we want a CAT 924B, period. I can't say I want a MAC certain <coughs> engine size, period. I have to put together a spec that says, I want six wheels, a steering wheel, orange, with a dump body of a certain weight and thickness, a plow of a certain width, and a wing of a certain width and height. What will happen is, I will get, just like I got here, EW Sleeper, Beauregard, Chadwick, Bay Ross, John Deere, HP Fairfields, Donovan, and Milton Cat, similar companies like them, all submitting a bid meeting the power plant, number of wheels, steering wheel, lights, headlights, all that. To do so would be not really, wouldn't be fair to the market, and it also wouldn't appear that through the bidding process that I've created a fair and equitable field. Now, they all know each other's equipment. They all know each other's costs. In the end, we had, I think we had a slight higher cost with the cat than we did with the the next price which was actually a lower price but we went to the board of selectmen and said hey for five thousand dollars we get it bigger shinier nicer tires whatever um the guys actually made that decision they're the ones going to be in this piece of equipment they wouldn't let me make the decision they made the decision which piece of equipment they wanted frank came here that night we sat before the board of selectmen got their approval, purchased the piece of equipment. The same process has to be followed. I'd love a Mac, but when the price comes down from Mac, and yes, we could probably say this Mac will last us 25 years, and therefore per year will be this, yet the international is, okay, let's say $20,000 less, and that may have a projected life of 20 years. In the end, Somebody's going to stand up and say, hey, you have to follow the town's purchasing policy. Greatest value for the dollar spent. And in that situation, that's what may actually decide it. We may be, I may be taken out of that equation. Mike may be taken out of that equation. Mike. I'm just what I actually so follow up on what uh, you're saying there, if the Mack trucks have lasted since 1988, that alone tells a story. Oh, without having Mike reiterate on that, and if it costs a few thousand dollars more, when the, you come into the Board of Selectmen, if I was there and you say, I want a Mack versus a piece of whatever, a piece of whatever, you would have my approval right on the spot, and I'm sure Mr. Waddell would agree with that. If you're buying something that you know is going to pay for itself, you're going to last 25 years, it's going to cost you some amount of money per year in relation to the length of the, the life, it's only, say, $5,000 a year. I'm picking it out of the sky there versus 3000 or 10000 for the other vehicle. You're going to pick the one that's the most economically feasible overall. And I think when we go to looking at an international, I have nothing against international because I drove a lot of those tractors when I was a kid, but the Mack trucks have been around since I was a kid, and they last forever. So I, I don't have any problem with that. It's a good vehicle. And that's all I'm going to say. 1988 speaks for itself, like Mike says. That's all I have to say. Would agree. Jerry and... I'll try to summarize quickly. I, you're asking for almost $400,000, and I wish I could say I was sold on it. And some of the issues, <coughs> some of the 
the process that was discussed. It's just not embedded into me. Engine hours, body rust or body preparation, uh, you know, the whole package. I mean, I'm just not sold on this. And I will close. The, the, Mike, do you have a recommendation on any of that? I mean, you say you wouldn't buy anything here. But would you have a recommendation to send them off to think about or whatever? I mean, I... Well, I, I they're definitely are going to come to the time where you're going to have to either hmm. rebuild these two trucks or replace them. Yeah. But what Absolutely. You, but we're not there yet on these? I, I don't think we're there. Yeah, I, I would I would option that out and I would look at new chassis and I would I would compare it. I I spent a lot of time on this before I jumped into something like this. Just give them a check and let them go do it. I mean that's all you're doing is giving them a check. Absolutely. All right, Joe. I think the biggest the biggest problem with this article is, is that we're not being told what you're going to buy. Mm. I think that's the biggest thing. What you're not you're not trading in a one ton dump truck, or you're not you're not trading in a six wheel dump truck for another six wheel dump truck. I think that's the problem, and it's happened here before. I believe it happened with the cemetery department when they was going to trade in a vehicle, and that one didn't get traded in. I think that's the big problem. There's this things are just being hidden here. Take a vote, Tim. Uh, well. The, the, the main flags that went up for me was the statement that <clears throat> you're trying to avert a disaster in 2017, 2018. Trying to be responsible today. Right, trying to avert a disaster was, was your phrase. Mm -hmm. And that disaster was related to how much equipment you're anticipating having to buy in that year, and you're trying to cut that number down by actually funding some of it now, which is very consistent with, with what Mike is saying, that you don't actually need to make the purchase now. But you're doing it for essentially political reasons because you think you'd be able to better sell a smaller dollar amount in 2018 by taking some of those dollars now. And so those two statements, what Mike has said and what you said relative to averting the disaster, tells me pretty concretely that this is not needed now. And so my vote on this is not needed now either. We, we kind of based our approach That's the same way the, the fire department based their approach when they <coughs> came up to you for 675000 or $625,000 fire truck. They equated to it that the one that they were placing is an antique vehicle um, and that they're going to get a 20-year life out of that vehicle. Ten years is a front line, ten years is a secondary. That equates to a $31,000 a year purchase. For, for something that's there to avert emergencies. If, um, our, if our decision uh, relative to the fire department's equipment, <coughs> if that criteria you thing. see an equiv equivocation with yours, mm -hmm. then I would advance the idea that we revisit the fire equipment rather than passing this particular one up. And I would like to add something to that, especially where the fire equipment is. This is not a matter of this department got this, so I think we want that. I agree. And, and that's I, the note that this conversation just took. I don't, really. I don't like it either. I, I don't like it. You know, I mean, was, this guy gets a truck, so that guy gets a truck. We're trying, in all seriousness, to help endorse the funding of the departments with reasonable plans for exactly what they do need and create time frames for them. But I don't think it works particularly well to put a fire truck up against a Mack truck that, according to Mike, and I usually, I know nothing about trucks, um, hasn't quite outlived its life. I don't feel that, I'm, I'm just looking at numbers and length of service on what we have, knowing that there is some life left there's not a really good trade in value, quite honestly, this day, these days. $6,000 goes out the window. Well, you have something in the shop, you might as well keep one for a backup for 6000 All those things considered gives me an uncomfortable um, stand on this Madam particular warrant article. Are you prepared to take a motion on this? I am. Would you like to do that, Mike? I can. Go ahead. I'll make a motion that we... Uh, Disapprove, I guess. Uh, recommend. Not, recommend. Not, recommend. Not recommend. Not recommend. Yeah. 
This expenditure. Is Second. Okay. okay. All those in favor to not recommend. I, I need to know the no's. Yeah, you need to know the okay. minority, right? And all those <laughs> opposed, which means you do recommend this morning. Okay, Sonny. There's two rebels down there. Sonny, <laughs> <laughs> Waddell. Third one. No, they, they look at it differently, and it's their right I'm to I'm just do that. teasing. No, okay, don't tease. <laughs> okay, so there's four. Could you keep your hands up? Those four who, who, voting. who do recommend. No. Which means oppose the motion, yes. Yep. No. <laughs> you're voting no on the motion. The, yes, the motion sir. is to, to not, not recommend. recommend. So you're if voting you no to recommend. that motion, which means that you are for, okay, this Warren article. Okay, so one, two, three. 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 I'm abstaining. Oh. And Lad is abstained. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Ten, three, one. Correct. Ten, three, one? Yeah. <laughs> two. Article 17. Uh -huh. Article 17 is for improvements to Exeter Road. Uh, Public Works has developed a long-term paving plan for the town, 77 miles of roads. This plan took into account condition of the road, the use of the road, such as the uh, amount of traffic on the road, the importance of the road as far as is an arterial road, connector road, country road, or residential road. This plan has identified Exeter Road as the top priority for repairs due to large part to the poor condition and heavy use. Also that it's um, an emergency evacuation route as well. Um, as you all know, we've done a portion of the roadway from the Exeter Town Line to approximately the uh, uh, Route 95 overpass. From Route 95 overpass to Route 1 overpass is state-owned. So now we've been looking at and focusing at from Route 101 to the railroad bridge. The main reason that we've initially, and I set this up to do it in phases, to do the uh, outer, uh, outer end of Exeter Road is because it had no major utilities to have to deal with. So that when we repaved that road, we didn't have to worry about replacing sewers or drain lines or whatever. Um, from Route 101 to the railroad bridge has municipal sewer in it, storm drain system that is totally inadequate and a number of uh, design issues with that road as, as, as well as the road base goes. So last year I went to the selectmen and I asked for the money to come out of the road capital improvement fund to do a full design of that roadway so that we would have accurate numbers to work with because the final design will provide you with a much tighter <coughs> budget for the roadway. What I ended up with is the selectman asked me, instead of doing the final design, to do a preliminary design. Well, whenever you do a preliminary design, and, and quite often we do those to kind of see where we're at, it's, it's, it's just looking in generality of the whole project. So what you do at that point is you, build, you, 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 you put in a bigger contingency. Once you get to the final design, you can drop the contingency down to 10,000, uh, I mean, sorry, 10 percent, maybe 6 to 10 percent. But if you go with a prelimi preliminary design, the rule of thumb in engineering is you use about 25 percent at that point, and then you refine it as time goes on, and then certainly once you go out to bid, you can even drop that down more. Well, as everybody knows, the engineers did their work, the preliminary design, Looking at, we, we televised all the sewers. We looked at the storm drainage system. I had, I believe, two stakeholder meetings where I invited all the residents to come in that live along that roadway. So we, so they had an opportunity to express concerns. They live and breathe it every day. They identified a number of serious drainage problems out there. 
We looked at sidewalks. Um, we looked at, okay, how do we do this right? You know, get it right, and the price tag came in at $5.8 million, um, which is a, a, we all know is a lot of money. I projected from day one, I had always said to do it, a complete job, thorough job, would be around 5 to $6 million, so I wasn't that far off. I never sold it for anything from the day that I got here, and we looked at that initially, that that was the amount of money. But through that process, the, d the, the selectmen did decide, which I respect their decision, that they couldn't support doing the full operation, the, the full project for the $5.8 million at this point, and how it would affect the taxpayers. So I was tasked to come in with, what are some of the alternatives? <laughs> so I provided, I believe it was four alternatives, one was, um, you know, to do the whole thing, keep that in, on the table. Another one was to um, combine the downtown drainage project with replacing the sewer in the storm drain system and then just doing that portion of it and let that set a couple of years and then go back and do the rest of the project. And then another option was to do a shim and overlay. And what we talk about with the Shimon overlay is you're not looking at the, uh, the, 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 the utilities, the underground utilities, but it's really a, a temporary fix. Now, a temporary fix with a Shimon overlay, you're talking at probably uh, a five to eight year period before that's going to start falling apart. Because what we did when we looked at the road base and we did road borings, that road is literally made up. You talk about, you know, mulligan stew or something where you put everything in there. That's the mulligan stew out, stew out there. There's everything in there. There's rubble. There's old concrete. It, 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 it's an unstable base. So the full design talks about removing that base, grinding it up, and reapplying it with some extra admixtures. And, and, and that's the, the, uh, the MAC way of doing it. Um, I respect the decision of the Board of Selectmen to go with a Shimon overlay, and that's what I've put in this Warren article. So the Warren article at this point is based on just doing a Shimon overlay. What I talk about a shim is that we would go in and do some leveling courses. Some places are worse than others, so what we'd do is we'd go in there and do some strategic leveling with this shim, and then we'd go over and put like an <coughs> inch, an inch and a half over that. And it will be great. It will be great for a five to eight year period. Maybe we even get more time out of it than <coughs> that. But with an unstable base, you just need to know that at some point in time, sooner than later, you're going to start seeing alligator cracking and reflective cracking in that road. But it is, it, it's not money that's just going down the drain, but I want to make it clear that it is buying some time. Keith, what was the amount of money for option two? Which option? The second option. The one that involved the okay. drains. Okay, so um, to replace the sewer, replace the sewer. Oh, j okay, there was another option just to replace the sewer was um, about. 1.5 million dollars and that's with a shim and overlay so that would be replacing the sewer not dealing with the storm drains but just simply replacing the sewer and replacing the laterals that go to get it out of the roadway and then I threw in the third option abiding the downtown drainage project because I thought that by including the downtown drainage project one of the reasons the downtown the drainage project that we already bid this year came in so high. There's a number of reasons, but one is it, it, it's not really a big enough project that you're going to get some of the bigger contractors in there. So by bidding it with a much larger project, the, the, the cost of that project in itself will be less. So I threw that in, and that price was um, about uh, about uh, about two million dollars to do that. It was another three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars to show to to throw the downtown drainage project in there. 
So those were the three, and then like I said, the uh, Shimon overlay was $320,000. Where, what, what exact section of Exeter Road are we talking about? From just the outbound side of the railroad bridge. We weren't going to go about across the railroad bridge, just, you know, where the railroad bridge is, but, uh, by the old saw, mm -hmm. out to the 101 overpass. St. Cyr, that area. St. Cyr in that area. Now, normally, I shouldn't say normally because we haven't done anything normally, but normally we would do an overlay on a road periodically. Correct. And I've explained this. I've had the diagrams in here years ago where pavement breaks down over a period of time between right. the ozone and the acid rain. So if we had been keeping up with it, what would the, sh uh, the overlay alone have cost us? About $120,000. Not the Shimon overlay, or do they, they go hand in hand? Yeah. You can't well, do one without the other. See, the, the shim is is not a lot of not that. A lot. It's really the inch and a half that you're going to put on there. I mean, that may be thirty-five thousand dollars to do that shimming, depending on the condition of the road. Okay. Um, do you have any more that you want to present on this? Okay, I'm going to go around questions. on this. Jim, we'll start over on your side. Was one of those options to do nothing? Mm. Well, that's always an option. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and, and I say that seriously because are we, are, are we doing this for the sake of doing something? Um, because it seems to me that if you're saying in five years that road, the, the efforts that we take and the money that we undertake now will all be going back to where it is. And in the history of kicking the can down the road, it could very well be five years before we start talking seriously again about should we do that portion of that, should we do Exeter Road. And in the meantime, we've taken that amount of money and basically wasted it because we're going to be doing the whole thing again. So I wonder if it's, if it's worth doing nothing, if that's an option, until the town is committed to doing something It's permanent. Uh, adding the sewerage to it, or adding the drainage to it, or adding something that's not going to be in five years is not going to be needed to be done again. Um, and I don't know. I mean, and I'm asking that in a serious. I mean, is it an option to do nothing, or are you? Do you think that it's in such bad shape that that something has to be done to maintain the safety of the road, or the safety of the travelers of the road, or? It, it's the one road in town we get the most complaints in the Public Works Department about. I don't get calls about Toll Farm Lane, or I don't get them about Mary Batchelder Road. I get them all about Exeter Road. When are you going to do something? When are you going to do something? Yeah. And uh, that's an expensive road. We have to have uh, police control when we do pothole patching. We, we've almost got a dedicated crew out there during the spring thaw on just patching, patching, patching. and. Patching potholes don't hold. That's a very inefficient way of pavement management. So the answer is that is an option. But that even with that option, there's still going to be a cost. It's not going to be $320,000, but it's going to be cost of a five-man crew out there and patching day in and day out. And the patches typically on a road like that will last two weeks. So essentially what we're saying is we'll this will carry us for about five years on that section of roadway. That's not even a guarantee. I'm saying, you know, I would, it, it, I'd like to think we'd get five to eight years where before it would start, you'd start seeing a noticeable breakdown. But it could happen in three years. But my guess is it would be five to eight year period. Let me ask you this. If this is done when down the road somewhere if, if we come to a point where we say we're going to do the whole project. Is this beneficial to do now or is it just dug up with the rest of it and... Well, we could recycle the asphalt. So it's the, the, the price of the asphalt went go down. What we would do is we would reclaim the asphalt, mix it in with so, so, some of the existing material 
is a process to do that, and that certainly would be that. So I don't want to mislead you or, or suggest <coughs> that uh, if we spend $320,000 now, it's going to be a total loss. It's not like we're going to take that asphalt up and take it out to the landfill. Okay. All right, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows the Exeter Road's a mess. <laughs> Everybody knows Exeter Road should have been dealt with Just what to way do with before it. this. Um, <coughs> and, that, and, and the problem is, as Keith has said, it's the what's underneath is the major problem too, the sewer and everything else. And you know, the five point eight million dollars didn't think that was going to fly. So I mean, does something have to be done to Exeter Road? I would say something has to be done to Exeter Road. I, I would say when you drive it, the potholes are there. You'll see people come from one side of the road to the other side of the road to miss the potholes. So there is a real danger there. It is the <coughs> coming from 93, the main part getting into town. Uh, is this my favorite? No. I'd love to see the whole thing done. But what's reality? Finished. Glenn? Uh, I, I agree. Okay. Bob? Uh, what would be the life expectancy of the road if you did the five plus million dollar project? How long would that road last? Well, if you look at the charts, what happens is the typical asphalt will have a decline. It, it, it starts to lose its elasticity, and the elasticity is what's most important in a roadway to, to, so it can flex. But because of the ozone and the acid rain over a period of time, makes it brittle. So <coughs> we've got plenty of charts that will show that there's a, there's a steady decline up until 10 to 12 years, and then all of a sudden it starts declining, accelerating with the decline. So ideally, most towns in the state of New Hampshire try to repave a road at between that 10 and 12 year period before it gets to that state. But it's not just Hampton, it's across the country. It's communities that people just can't afford to do that, in part because infrastructure takes a back, you know, doesn't get top priority as far as that goes. So the, the answer to your question is it would definitely be good for a 10 to 12 year period and then you'd start seeing a decline. But I would say, my guess is that before we would really have to do anything, it would be good to maybe do a, there's another thing called micropaving, where it's sort of like more than just putting a shim down, a, a small, it's, it's just a slight shim, just to kind of protect, it's almost like an oil seal, but a, a higher tech. So there's other ways of doing it. But, but I think it would be good for a 15 to 20 year period if we did it right. So. This three hundred thousand plus that buys you five to eight years sounds like a pretty darn good value. Yeah. As opposed to you got practically mm -hmm. do nothing, do this, or do six million. Okay. Nothing isn't a good answer, and six million's not doable. So this one. But but makes something sense. that's important here: the vast majority of that five point eight million is not the road; it's the utilities underneath it. I, I get that, but you're yeah. not going to get five point. Eight million dollars. No, and I understand and that. No, no, independently of the utilities, dollars. the road needs to be addressed in, in some way. This just seems to make good economic sense at the moment. It's not kicking the can down; it's doing something to the can at the present. Washington. Not <laughs> quite filling it, but we're not just putting a dent in the side of it. <laughs> I want to make it. I'm not saying that it's a bad decision to do this fix. I'm just saying that I just want everybody to know what they're getting for their money. <laughs> it's the decision of the town on which way they want to go. Yeah. Tim? Speaking of bad decisions, I mean, this is a state road. No, it isn't. Is it not route, uh, <coughs> no. state route what? We own that road. No. We maintain yeah. it. We have full control It is a state road, road, right? Yeah. yeah. We, a road. But we, we managed to be uh, via Town One article some years ago, adopted this road, right, from the state in terms of maintaining it. Can we the stay on the warrant the article? The state Please. gives us, we'll be talking about a highway block grant. That highway block grant is based off the gas tax. It's based on, is, um, uh, uh, but based on the length of the road 
depending on the type of the road, whether it's, a, I always mix it up, class four, class five, one of the two roads we get a little bit more for. So when the state gave us that road. Gave us that road. They, they gave us, they blessed us with that road. Then we, we, ex we accepted to, that road, we, didn't we? Right? I don't know how they that just, They works. just shoved it down our throat? I don't know how that works. State amended RSA 229 colon 5 uh -huh. for a whole series of towns in the state of New Hampshire and divested themselves of the opportunity to maintain certain roadways. We call them compact roads. Yeah. The state gave those to those cities and towns. We're one of them. If work was to be done on the road, they were to share 20% of that. The problem is they stopped appropriating money for the 20%, so we call 100% of the time. Wasn't there also some Fed money too? Uh, no, not for not for. Uh, mm -hmm. the so, okay. So can the we state. Get back, can the we state, get back to yes, the? Yes, I am on the one article. So the state gave us the uh, the road and the maintenance to the road uh, without us having any vote on it at all. Which the legislature gave it to us. Right, without us having any vote on it at all. It's like an unfunded mandate, isn't it? Well, let's say it's a, a transfer of responsibility. <laughs> for that. Well, it's just another example of the state, you know, uh, you know, abusing this town. It doesn't make me feel any better that they're abusing other towns likewise. We're still being abused, and we're having to live with this. This is a heavily used road. That's why it was a state road to begin with. They built the damn thing the way it is, right? They could the ones that designed it originally. I don't no, the think Indians ever did. Designed. I think well, <laughs> <laughs> they're the ones that chose to build it without a design. <laughs> so it, it's really basically a terrible situation that's been shoved down our throats. That was originally. That, is that a yeah. basic yeah. layman yes. summary yes. that's accurate? I finally agree with you on something. <laughs> <laughs> we better if quit I stay on the path of truth long enough, I know you'd come aboard. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Uh, so the three hundred and twenty thousand dollars, which equates to something like four hundred dollars for the average family of three hundred and twenty-five, Jerry. Well, it's it's three thirty-seven, thirty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, it's one hundred and thirty dollars per hundred thousand dollars on a three hundred twenty-five thousand dollar home. For uh, less than half of one of my tires, so. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying it's too high or too low. My my concern is uh, simply that you know we know what we're dealing with here is what what you are saying. I mean, we've got a situation where we don't want to pay for it. So this is a situation we're going to keep kicking the can down the road on something we never wanted to begin with. The state forced us down. It's another example of the state abusing this town. I just wanted to highlight that. I don't know how I'm going to vote. My inclination is to vote yeah because, well, gee, we can't take the can off the road. We've got to kick it down the road, I guess, because we don't have much of a choice. But I'm, I'm waiting to listen to the wisdom on the other side over here from some of my fellow members. So I'll shut up now. Thank you. I'm going to pass. Thank you for now. Fred, you gave a good explanation of this at the selectmen's meeting. If the money was available to do the road today, how long would it take before you got all the approvals and the paperwork done to start this project? 17. Well, if the money were available today, if I have to finish, do the engineering plan to start. Right. Okay, so that's going to take some period of time. Just, right. Uh, you're probably looking at some place in the latter part of the following year, that is 2015, uh, to get all of your documents it's done and start the work. <coughs> so it wouldn't be done until 2016 because you can't do the construction over the winter. No. Unless it's an open winter like you've had so far and not too cold. And, and if you had a snag or two, you you could sp spend a year or two getting this ready to go. Well, there are a lot of snags in that road. I, 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 he's I, alluded to some of them. And I think probably every piece of garbage that the state had when they did the road, they dumped in there Put and it made in a base. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you, you get a lot of snags just replacing the pipe. You're talking about the road itself. So, so it's a two-year project. Absolutely. And I, and I think this amount of money to raise, when you ship it, you're going to raise it up and get the water off of the road as much as you can. 
right? We would try to put a crown back in. Right. And get the water off it. Right. The water is the issue. Right. It's, it's really the most problem right. from the bridge up to Toll Farm Road or a little further where the, where the water sits right. in there. It will buy us four or five years. You won't lose the material because you could grind it and reuse it. And it will give you a chance to get the plans, the paperwork, the permits, and know what you're going to do before you go to do it. And that being the, the, the number one road in the town, I think that you're kicking a can down the road if you don't support this. Because there won't be any road there in two years. It's gone. There's nothing left of it. Then it'll be permeable, right? It will be. Oh, great. It'll save on our flooding problem. But you won't be able to travel it. <laughs> but it won't be compact. <laughs> so I, I'd, I would support this. All right. I came in here tonight not wanting to support this. I was in favor of doing it, doing it right, or doing it at least in stages. And Mike, you're, you're agreeing with me. But based on getting it done in a faster time frame, it's an accident waiting to happen. I drive a Miata. I, I swear one of these days somebody's going to have to come pull me out of one of the potholes. All right. I worry about we have motorcycle traffic increasing and so on and so forth. The road is horrendous. <coughs> and the fact that it will get us through five years, and the other fact being is that there are those who have visions of future development downtown, and I think that has to play at some point into resolution <coughs> before we can actually do everything we want to do with Exeter Road. So I think this Band-Aid of sorts will accomplish a lot of things at basically 5% of the cost of what it would have done, what it will cost us down the road. Now, I realize that when we do come back to address this in the proper manner, it is going to cost us more. But we are not prepared right now for another bond of $5.8 million. And I think that being said, even those of you who may not have been for this, you may want to revisit it intellectually because we do have a need and the public is crying out to have that road fixed. And you don't have $5.8 million in your pocket. And even if you did, you would take it would take you two years to come to terms with it. So it has gone on long enough. Uh, the dismay I would have is that probably in the past, which you're not responsible for, um, but this comes under doing things on a regular maintenance schedule, and that didn't happen, so this went woefully by the boards. So I am now coming into this, having come into this meeting against this article, I'm flipping and agreeing that I think this is a value for the time being. want to throw something else in there. Just because I'm for that um, and hearing everything, it does not mean we're done. It's not mean, okay, we put a fresh coat of paint on, with paving on Exeter Road, and we're done, never to come back. I do believe that the planning for the next stages of it need to commence at almost immediately after paving this. And, and Fred, you're shaking your head back there, agreeing with me. I believe the select are going to prepare to put an article in next year to uh, do the, uh, the first phase of this, which is the planning, mm -hmm. and begin to do the sewer and the drains. Okay. Good. Thank you. Cherry? I have trouble with it, um, you know, because, you know, we're talking about infrastructure, the condition of the infrastructure, which I know, I don't know what the condition of the infrastructure is. I've seen no boroscope, uh, visual uh, photographs. I don't know if it's leaking, infiltrating. I don't know. So if, if that study's been done, I certainly would like to see it. And um, ask further questions when I do see it. Then the base of the road itself is bad, is it? Is it not? Yes. Yes. Well, that's got to be redone. Right. It's on so the website here. What's that? The report is on the website. Right. Okay. Well, then I'll look at it. <coughs> uh, and then, and then asphalt on top of that. So this is to me a three hundred twenty thousand band aid for two years, maybe three at the most, before we're ripping it back up. 
if, if the plan comes in and the selectmen do all of the things that they're planning on doing, he'll be ripping that road up in two and a half years or three years to, 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 to get at the infrastructure, to put that in place, and put a new base in place, put new asphalt down. And to, to put $320,000 into this for a couple of years, I can't support it. It's an absolute Band-Aid. I would, pot, I, would, I would keep filling that road the best I could to keep it smooth, keep the divots out of it, and so on and so forth, until we fish or cut bait as to what the hell to do with the infrastructure, the road base, and the asphalt. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, all of a sudden, now we're replacing gas pipes, water pipes, uh, sewer pipes, you know. Uh, maybe we just rebuild the road and forget the infrastructure. I don't know. I'll read the report. On top of that, I did see... I did see a report from this outfit that you've been working with that did not recommend doing this, shim and overlay. It absolutely did not recommend it because right I guess it wouldn't last. Right here. Yeah, right there. That's right. the paragraph. No, right there on the front page. Right there is a quote from the engineer. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. Presented at the selectmen's meeting. A pavement overlay on Exeter Road will provide a smooth driving surface in the short term but will reflect the underlying deficiencies in the pavement and roadway base over a relatively short period of time. They don't recommend it at all. This is, what's the name of this outfit? This is uh, CMA. CMA. And the date is up to top, 11-11-14. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I can't support the mandate. Did that, uh, does that uh, recommend uh, not doing the overlay? It recommends it. As opposed to not doing anything at all? Well, I don't know. Not doing. Oh, they, they, they want to, they want the they project want the to go. Thing. They want the project to go forward. Well, that's why I'm wondering. Their 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 recommendations in a different context than what well, we're considering tonight. Right. That's all I wanted to point well, out. Yeah. Yeah. What they're saying is that's not going to last. Right. right. Well, that's everyone's acknowledged yeah, that. Yeah, we're for a short period of time. We're but besides that, I, I, I'm done. I, I I can't. I don't know. They're really good. Did we ever dig down? Did we ever find any infiltrate any section of the pipes that were deemed to be really bad? Yeah, we televised all the sewer ones. Okay. Did you go down and dig down and look at them? Yeah, we televised them. Televised it. They well, we did borings, but borings are a separate thing. That was to look at the the, the ground underneath. No, but I mean, this borings. pipe that they say is bad, or you say is bad through x-ray, have we gone down and dug in and looked at no, them? No, you look oh. at it, you televise it. That's televised. the standard this way. This is on the website? The televising? Oh, this whole analysis. The report, yes. I believe so. It was my understanding well, that we put it on that's there. That's kind of my position. Yeah, at you this say point. televising. You know yeah, me yeah. on Channel Point. <laughs> no, no, no. We could put it on there, but it'd be yeah, boring. So, yeah. If it's not on there, let me know and I'll make it, it sure. But I, I, I'm <laughs> 95... The DPW website? Uh, probably, or it's on the main website. But I believe it's on there. But just give me a call or an email. I'll make sure you get one. But I believe... Okay. Um, I, I see this as a two-year two band-aid. I can't afford it. Richard. Keith, the uh, stretch from the Exeter town line to 95, was that a shimming and overlay? No, that was a total reconstruction. Total reconstruction. Well, yeah. it, it wasn't. Uh, what we did was it's the, the base under that wasn't quite so bad as what we found in in from the 101 in because what happens is when you put utilities in over a period of time that's what a lot of times when they backfill it with crappy stuff so between there's gas there's water there's sewer there's drain pipes in there whereas from 95 to Exeter it was relative there's gas but it's relatively undisturbed so what we did was we went down and we ground about six to twelve inches of that material to do what we did, right. and, but we did borings of that. But the the, the 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 substructure from the 101 back into town is so bad that they went down and they found crappy stuff to be four feet. So it would have to go down instead of just six to twelve inches. That's why it's much more cost. We have to go down deeper to get that really crappy stuff so out. So you're of saying it. that this shimming and overlaying is a more stable type of construction than what you've done from 95 to the exit of the town line? No, yeah. I'm not at all. It's, the, it's just the opposite. Oh, no. right. It's the opposite of that. It's just the putting opposite. a cover on it. You, you, right. you put a, yeah. Yeah. Just putting a cover over the top on the middle of the side. Mm -hmm. Or you could think of it as an umbrella. Yeah. Well, what's the distance? How far is that from 101 to the bridge? 101, I want to say I mean, it's a, a mile. Yeah, I want to say three miles. Three. 1.3 miles. Okay. Around a mile, yeah. At a cost of how much a foot? 
Does it matter? Does it um, matter? Um, just, I'm just curious. I want to say it's around $1, just under six hundred dollars a foot. About six hundred with with everything. So the stretch from ninety five to the exit of town line was double that, maybe. It's two miles, six hundred and sixteen thousand, six hundred in work and sixteen thousand in police details. And then you said that the state owns between ninety five and one hundred one. Right. So here we got like two thirds of that road done, basically, right? right? Just about, except for the stretch that we're talking about now. All right. Thank you. Michael. I was just going to reiterate <coughs> what uh, Jerry read from this article. It's a temporary band-aid is what this boils down to, and our engineer recommends not doing it. I, I tend to agree that even though it's, it's going to be bothersome and troublesome for us to uh, pop up the potholes on that road, but we've been able to deal with it the last couple of years, and uh, I would like to see what the original plan come forward when I was a selectman, we come in for an estimate of around 2.5 million to do the whole thing, the Cadillac version. And then when they redid this last time, it escalated up to 5.8 or something like that. So my, the point there is, whether it was exactly the same approach or not, I can't answer the question, but it was basically do the whole thing, do the underlying road and the, the whole six yards. If it's doubled in price in that short period of time, there's either two things to, that causing, might be causing a problem, either inflation, which we know that that's not true. That is not it. So what it is, on the second version, they obviously did some fancy curbings and things like that that we don't need, period. Those granite curbings just slice tires if you happen to hit one with your tires. So I don't care, I don't care about all that malarkey. Fix the road, fix the plumbing, and come up with a plan that does that, what will serve the town for 20 or 30 years, like other roads in this town. So I'm definitely against this temporary band-aid. Thank you. Thank you, Sonny. You know, I mean, if I recall, there's two or three houses down near Liberty Lane that aren't connected to the wastewater. The rest of it is connect. The last three houses on the on the south side of because I, I was walking the neighborhood and they, they told me that. I mean, clearly there's so much traffic on the, you, you have to do something at this point. The big problem is you get all the trucks coming down that road. You know, I know the RPC is looking to <coughs> do a restructuring of the interchange of 10101 because the trucks don't want to navigate that to go on to 101 to get to 95. You know, this is a whole different picture. The only, the only, Tau Farm Road's getting some heavy trucks now. I mean, this will give you five years. You really don't have any choice. You know, wh what you're saying is that the route one, Exeter Road from the 95 bridge to Exeter line it will last more than five years. Because at some point, you probably should do the whole thing and do it right, you know, but at this point in time you have to, you have to go with the shim and get at least five years out of it. Brian? <coughs> we spent $75,000 for preliminary designs. Have we completed the final design yet? No, it didn't cost 75000 for the final design, or okay. for the design. The preliminary design, I believe, was like there, with the televising, it was around forty thousand dollars. So we we gotten the final design. No. 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 When do we expect to have that, or is that going to come out of this? That's a decision of the board of selectmen. <coughs> so even if we do the patch, we still don't have a final design. Correct. And how much would, I mean, that would be 75, I mean, how much would that be for a final no, design? No, no. I had budgeted, of this? no, I had budgeted 75000 for the final design. Right. And if you look at the Warren article from last, from this past year, it authorized us to spend up to $75,000 for that final design. But the selectmen, the previous board of selectmen said, we don't want to spend that money we want you to do a preliminary design 
and then I negotiated that fee with the uh, engineering firm. It was around 35000 and then we looked at the sewer, and then they authorized spending a little bit more money to televise the sewer. So a, a lot of the work that was associated with the preliminary design could be applied to the final design. We wouldn't have to do that over again. Like some of the survey work, we wouldn't have to do that over again. We'd still have to do more work, but my guess is we could still do it. I'd have to look at the numbers, but you know, for a 45, we might be able to fit it in with that $75,000 figure to do the final design. Because you already did camera work. And right, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, We're going to move this along a little bit. Uh, That's all we I have to. Thank you. I just say I support it. I have to travel that road every day. And it's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It is just crazy. My one question I do have is if you do the, do the whole thing, you're going to replace the water lines, the sewer lines, the gas lines, right? No. Mm -hmm. the, the gas lines, we've met with the gas company and the water company, and they said that their lines are in good shape. They don't need to be okay. replaced. Okay. So it's just the sewer lines? And the drain lines. Okay. Awesome. If we get around to doing it. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I have a motion to recommend. I'll make a motion to not recommend. To not recommend. Okay. I'll second it. And you'll second it? Okay, the motion is to not recommend. All those in favor to not recommend. Okay, all no, the... you can make that four. I'll not recommend. You'll not recommend? Okay. Okay, wait. Do, do that Put again. your hands up again. The four. Well, you are voting for the motion I made? Yes. Not recommend. Yes. Yes. Do not Pierce. recommend. Brian Lapham. Tim Jones. Lapham. Reluctant Jones. Do not recommend. And now <coughs> those opposed to the motion, which means you are recommending this Warren article. And I see no abstentions. Correct? Nine. Ten. 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 Four. Ten. Four. Ten. Four. Ten. Four. Four. Okay. Ten. Four. Ten. Four. All right. I am going to give a break until quarter past nine. I am going to suggest that when you come back, we are going to need to pick up the pace on this. We have a lot to do before 11 o'clock when we will lose um, cable. <coughs> so. You can move it, vote. Cool. Yeah, vote. Yeah, vote. This one? Oh, we're going to be back. I didn't go far. <laughs> well, thank you for enduring our break, and welcome back, everybody. We're live in action again. I'll move out of 18. We, I'm sorry. I'll move out of 18. I said talk fast, and that's good. Um, Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Okay. What did everybody have on the break? Article 18. High Street and Lafayette Road drainage. Keith, we're back to you on this one. Okay. So this project was first identified as a need back in <coughs> 2010 when a torrential rainstorm caused significant flooding in the downtown area, specifically around the intersection of um, uh, High Street, Lafayette Road, and Exeter Road. Uh, it's my understanding, because I wasn't here at the time, that a number of the stores got flooded out and the town identified that as a, as a priority and uh, to, to, to be corrected. And it applied for a, uh, a FEMA grant at the time. Um, the original, so the original estimate, I don't have that with me, but was probably about, I think it was like $150,000, $175,000 for the estimate. And FEMA based their percentage, it's an 80-20%, I believe it's 80-20% grant. Uh, based on that amount of money uh, that was estimated. Uh, as the project went forward, 
uh, and they did some preliminary engineering, they found that the money was not, but not enough money was budgeted for the project. So they reapplied to FEMA and did get an increase in the funding. And I believe that brought that up to about $175,000, $200,000 project. Yeah, 198. 198. So, um, and then, so I took some money out of my, because we had to have a 20% grant. Uh, I was planning on using the drain account out of the operating budget to cover the town's 20%. So we proceeded with the design work and we did the design work and this involved just the downtown right around that intersection uh, upgrading the pipe sizing. I think it added a couple more uh, catch basins uh, and so forth. So we went through the process of a final design. We just put it out to bid and when we had the pre-bid conference uh, five contractors showed up showing it was mandatory pre-bid. Uh, five contractors showed up showing some interest in submitting a bid. So I was a little bit hopeful at that time that we'd get some good competitive bidding. Uh, but then we had the bid opening and only two contractors bid the project. And one came in at, uh, I believe it was $398,000, and the other one was like $440,000, which was twice of the amount of money that we had allocated between the FEMA grant and the town's 20% portion. So at that point, we decided to regroup. We contacted the bidders to find out why their bids were so much higher than the estimate. And, and we actually asked a couple of contractors why they didn't even bid. And between just workload, time of year, but the biggest thing was the confined area downtown and trying to work around maintaining traffic, they just saw this as being a big headache and not enough of a money maker. So the two contractors that did place a bid, they put a lot of fluff in there. So if they got it, they were covering all their bases. Mm -hmm. So um, I cont we contacted FEMA to see the status of the, um, of the grant, and they said that they've already given us one increase and one extension, so there will be no more increases, but they would consider giving us a one more one year more extension. But the whole project has to be done by, I believe it's, February 15th of 2016 or March 16th or whatever, that they literally would give us another year. We have yet to get that assurance from them. We put in the request about two months ago and we still haven't heard, but when we talked to FEMA um, or the New Hampshire agency of FEMA or Homeland Security or whatever, um, they said they thought that it wouldn't be a problem getting that funding. So. We went back to the selectmen and we said, this is the status of the project. You know, we could lose the funding, which is a significant amount of funding, if we don't do something right away. And uh, they voted to go ahead and uh, have this Warren article, which would cover the full amount, but the Warren article would be contingent <coughs> upon the federal funding. So if we don't get the federal funding, then the Warren article is, 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 is obsolete. So that's where it stands. And what, what we'd like to do is any time that you bid a project and you can give more of a time spread to the contractors, you're going to generate more interest. So if you say to them, look, you have to do it between September and October of this year, um, you, there's going to be some contractors that already have work planned for that time period that aren't going to bid. So if we bid it, if we're ready to go right after town meeting, and if town meeting supports this warrant article, the design is already done. We've paid for the full design. So we could put it out to bid, and we could say to the contractor, okay, you've got a seven-month period to do this. It has to be done by November 15th or whatever, with the hope that that would generate more interest, more competition with contractors that could drive down the cost. And I've also talked to um, the, the new police chief about having a work session to try to figure out 
how we could ever pull this off to minimize the cost of traffic control because traffic control in this town is very expensive. I think there's six thousand mm -hmm. dollars $6, in the budget for just traffic control. So we're, we're looking at doing a number of things that we hope will bring that cost down to fit it within the budget, but there's no guarantees uh, at this point. So that's what this is all about. Now, are you not going to block off Lafayette Road? Pardon me? Block off Lafayette I, I don't even say what we're going to do at this point. We might be able to do half the road, have one-way traffic. <coughs> we may have to detour them all the way around. We'll have, we'll get the contractor in there and the, in, the you know, the, the police department will have a think tank on how can we minimize the disruption to the, to the, to the downtown businesses as well because that would be a concern. Mm -hmm. So how do we pull this off? in order to alleviate the concern from the contractors that they have to build this big fluff factor in there, which is a huge contingency because they don't want to get stuck, you know, losing money on the deal. Right. Thank you. This is from the hardware store down with a flatbed company? Yeah, it doesn't go that far. It doesn't okay. go that just far. It's really just around the general intersection, but it does involve going through Morelli Square with a, a new a, a increase in the size of the drain pipe there. The selectmen made two additional changes to this article since the last time you've seen it. They've added verbiage to say, quote, this drainage work shall be publicly bid. And then they added a second contingency. If the offsetting revenues are not received or the public bids are in excess of the appropriation and the receipt of FEMA revenues prior to the setting of the tax rate for the calendar year 215, then the appropriation contained in the article shall be null and void. The idea being that if the bids come in again so high that it's not covered by the appropriation, it won't be raised from taxes. Good. I do have one question. Uh, that, that text is in front of us, I believe, that you just read. But yes. I, I did notice that these various warrant articles, they all have a different uh, per thousand valuation uh, fiscal impact. And I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, I can't quite figure out why they're all different. They're all different sums of money. No, no. Why the uh, per thousand rate is is different? Oh, I see what you're saying. Because the total is different. Yeah. Yeah. So right. it's still it's still uh, basically thirty cents per hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to be right. sure that that was right because that's what even my. Yeah, we're, we're just basing it on the amount of money in the article. That's all. Okay. So thirty thousand per thirty. Roughly, yeah. Forty cents per one hundred thousand is what I've calculated. Thank you. You already on this one? Yes. Okay. Although we have motion, right? Right. Yes. We have motion. motion now. I just want to make sure nobody else has anything to ask before we. Okay. Go All those in favor? Opposed? Um, no. abstaining. You're abstaining. Yeah, You're opposed? Oh, I'm abstaining. Mm -hmm. He's voting both ways, actually. First A and zero one. <laughs> I'll go that way with me. Article we'll move, uh, the next article, which is article Born eight. Article 19, is the road in as 18? I'll second it. I'm sorry. Am I jumping Representation, again? though. Yeah. That was article. This is basically to put $300,000 aside in funds for future expenditures regarding roads. That's all it's about. Any we want to put 300000 ahead into the future for future right. road improvements. Is the We've essential seen this question. before. Right. right. Okay. Ready to vote? Yes. I'm ready to vote. I do have a question. Right. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's start. We'll go down the end. Anybody? I'll Brian? I'll set. I'll set. Yeah. Okay. How much is in the reserve? Is there anything in it? Six five billion? I well I've six hundred thousand. Six hundred thousand, I think. Six hundred thousand? A little over. Thank yeah. you, Fred. Okay. That's all I want to know. Good job. And Good just so that we know what we're saving for. Do we have a project that we're saving for with this, or is this just? We have the road plan that we have with priorities. Um, so as soon as we get enough money. Part of the difficulty at this point is in the past, and I've explained this to this committee in the past, uh, in the past, how they would repave a road without addressing the utilities underneath it, which is not a good way of doing it. So mm -hmm. we need to replace the utilities. 
but that increases the cost of the project by two or threefold. So if, if, if I didn't have to worry about utilities, and we are looking at some roads, some country roads to, to pave. In other words, Keith, this is to do a road and do it right. Exactly. But we've got 600000 accumulated. That's what Fred said. Fred, this yeah. other 300000 will give us almost a million dollars. If, if, if this passes, I think next year we will start, you'll start seeing some roads on there because we'll have enough of a kitty to start doing some okay. road work. But we don't have with just 600000 And you'll notice, Madam Chairman, there's no authorization to withdraw this money. It has right. to go into just the Just to fund. go in. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, no going out. Okay. Right. And these okay. go back to town meeting for an authorization to exactly. withdraw anything. Thank you, Fred. Good to point out on that, Michael. In which we'll say there'll be no fiscal impact at that time. Okay. That, I just, that was my question. We had an, a, a warrant article like this last year of 300000 right? Right. Mm -hmm. So we're building up a, I'll use that term, kitty or slush fund or whatever. What, what oh, to, no. what, to what end? You know, at what point are you going to start saying, well, all right, here we've got I just, Nine hundred thousand. I, I just said that if this money gets approved next yeah. year, you should see us starting to have enough money to spend to start doing some work. That probably won't be a road that needs to have the utilities replaced, but we've got certain roads in town that are tough shape that don't have any utilities. And that just like that's how I did the, uh, Exeter, the, uh, the Exeter Road. You know the outer end of Exeter Road because it didn't have any utilities. But so I do want to start spending that money. Are you gearing this towards one large project, or do you have a plan for? We, we have a plan. Rumors. We have a plan that's prioritized, but we have to look at the cost of replacing the utilities. In fact, we're working on a project right now for the town manager where we're putting together the the same plan that we have for the roads that we've completed. Now he's asked us to do it for the sewer and the storm drain system, and we're working on, in fact, my engineering technician just completed the sewer portion of that. So now we can marry that with the road plan and start coming up with definitive projects to do over a period of time. For, more, for multiple projects, not necessarily just one road. Correct. All right. And it'll be up to, there'll be a whole discussion, I'm sure, between be which roads and how much they cost all the Exactly. Yeah. And which roads and who's on first and what's on second and who's okay, on Okay, we'll talk all right. more about right. that next week. <laughs> yes, or tomorrow Stay is what this is going. Um, <laughs> we right. have the discussion on this, anybody who doesn't Why understand. Why didn't we take money out of the capital fund to, for this project? Because then we won't have anything in the capital fund to do any big projects, and that's the intent. But we want to keep building. The yes, capital we'd like to. Yeah. Well, some of us would. Yeah, I. Uh, during it. <coughs> I just uh, can't afford it. Yeah. And um, are you going to pay? Yeah. Yeah. Steve, okay. in fairness to you, okay. The 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 three hundred thousand dollars I was willing to put in the capital improvement fund I already spent on the uh, high street uh, Lafayette Road drainage and more, four hundred fifty thousand there, so I'm already over my budget on that. I don't see any reason to salt away more money. Uh, if you need more money to do specific work, just like the Lafayette High Street Road project, you come in here with a project with a specific number, I'm okay with it. But just to put money aside for the sake of putting money aside because we're probably going to need it, okay, well, let's have a specific project which we're probably going to use it for. So I'm not going to be voting for this. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm in favor of the article. I think having a savings account as a town for future but not presently anticipated projects is a good idea. I think the taxpayers could have a savings fund too. Well, they can decide how they want to spend the money. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. You get one No vote. questions. Is that I think it's, uh, I think the article's good, but I, I also think the, the idea is good that, that you start saving, you, you, can, you can start planning. Um, if they would have been doing this for the last 20 years, we could have done all of Exeter Road this year. Um, <laughs> well, this fund right. had money in it to, to do something. Yeah. That's to, right. To, to do exactly that, that's and, right. and that's where the money came from now. to do the west end of Exeter Road. He took right. it all. That's right. So I, yeah. I think it's a good idea. But we only had 600,000 of this, so you could only go so far. 600,000 yeah. as far as I'm willing to go. Well, yeah. that's yeah. fine. Before we vote, in a perfect world, we would have a funded CIP commitment. Right. In a perfect that world, would we wouldn't have to fund anything, and it would all be done magically. Would allow <laughs> us. I move the, I move the question <laughs> in favor of yeah. time. Second. That would be perfect, wouldn't it, Fred? <laughs> we have a
mythical money, mythical money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what was the second on this motion? Me. Yes. Oh. Bob. All right. Okay. All those in favor? In favor of the road. I am in favor of the capital reserve fund. All right. Yeah. Opposed? Okay. Mm -hmm. And no abstentions, correct? So what you guys did earlier. Okay, moving on. Madam Chair, I'll move uh, Article 20 as written. Second. Keith, I know you want to go home sometime today. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so this is taking every year the town gets a cut off the gasoline tax. It's called the Highway Block Grant Fund. And uh, as I alluded to earlier, it's based on the miles of roads broken down into two classifications. The roads that give uh, get uh, less to us from the state, we get a higher amount, not much, but a higher amount per lane or per mile of road, I, I think it's based on. So what this is doing is that was that money was just as I understand it was just going in the general fund right. uh, so what we're doing now is we're proposing to redirect that money so that it's specifically for road improvements and we're going to try to do what we will be able to do Belmont Circle Fairfield Drive and Ruth Lane is a priority which is three roads that two years ago we replaced the sewer and the drain system on that road and as I've talked in the past, it's always good to wait two freeze-thaw cycles before we repave a road. So the timing is right to, to do that now and to repave those roads. Let's vote. Is this an impact to the taxpayer? Yeah, of course. Well, I don't know. If we get 270000 from the state, why, the, well, why it, are we asking 270000 from the taxpayer? It, it was will my be because you're taking now that basically you're not allocating Deferred the to general town fund. Manager. Looks That's like it's matching funds, Jerry. Anyway, can I make one comment? But how can it have a tax yeah, impact? We we wait, back. gentlemen. Gentlemen. I'd I mean, like there, are, there are questions project, around the table. So. A couple of years ago, we told those people up there, we're going to do the tearing apart one year. We're going to finish the next year. And guess what? It didn't get funded the next year. And I, don't, I was very unhappy about it, even though I was in, in sort of in charge of that mess when we did that because I was a selectman, remember? I was a selectman at that time, and I was really upset that we didn't do it the next year, and Keith remembers me yelling about that. But what really was upsetting is we tore the road all apart. Then we come in and patched it. We promised all those people we're going to do it. So let's pass this, please. I was going to vote on it, but you took my $300,000 away on the capital improvement plan. I didn't take <laughs> all right. it away. I'm still going to vote Any other it. comments on this? No. But why don't we wait and get the grant and then spend the money? Right. We You're going to get the grant in December, aren't you? In no, no. We get four, four payments. They come each quarter. Yeah. So save up for the 270 and go and go do Fairfield or whatever. I think that's the plan. Well, why are you Why are you asking the taxpayers to pay anything? Well, I think it's all offset pays. anyway. It says it's going to hit back 0.096 per right, thousand. Because it's no longer going to be used as straight mm -hmm. revenue to buy garbage cans or right. or to water lawns, or it's going to be used on roads. What he's saying is it won't be going to the general fund. Right. Right. I can't. Okay. We're we'll actually be spending it for roads, which we're supposed to go. I don't know why we have to penalize ourselves for spending Jerry, the money. It's not a penalty. What, what they're saying is, is that if we didn't spend it this way, then they'd spend it somewhere else where theoretically the budget would be lower. But we all know that that theory is just a theory. Okay. All those, <laughs> all those in favor of this one. <laughs> Opposed? Yeah. Abstentions? Thank you for bringing this forward. One opposed? Four. One opposed. Mm -hmm. We're going to get taxed. Yeah, the rebels. Right. The money comes it goes in. Finally delivered on a promise we made a couple, three years Well, we're not doing okay. human yeah. services. Right now. What else? To reduce the tax. Do we have anything else? Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, no, I, I, you're not going to talk here. about the withdrawal from 53B because that's not a money issue, right? No. Only no, money issue. I think I'm all set.
So you're all set to Thank you very much. It's all an experience. What was your ultimate one What kind of experience? No, it sounds like it's to me. All right, Freddie, you representing the rest? Good evening, guys. Oh, okay. Who are we doing? He, he was, he said, what is this? Well, there is a choice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the preferred article next, Fred. Right. I'll move article 21 is written. <laughs> Human <laughs> service agencies, oh. yeah. Oh, is that it? I was it okay. If there's anybody that has a question about it, because this appears every year, but if right. there's something that perhaps new people do not understand about this, we would be happy to <clears> explain it. But that's going to be what day after tomorrow we're going to explain it. No. Oh, in favor of time. Yeah. But if you tomorrow. already know how this Warren article works, then we don't need an explanation, and you can just vote. I just have one question. Real Certainly. Quick. I know they, somebody came before us last year to increase theirs, and they were pulled out of this, and they had to do a separate Warren article. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yep. Select so and change their policy. Didn't you notice that? I'm asking the question because there's some increases on 2000. Selectman changed their policy. Change the policy. Did. Okay. No, I didn't. Selectman did. Selectman changed the policy. <laughs> right. All right. That's fine. So they can just increase it without a separate warrant article now, right? right? Yep. Okay. Provided it makes it through the deliberative session. You know, well. that being said, there were a lot of reasons for why that was done in the format that it was done and not to allow it to just right. be increased in the Warren article yep. because that gave us the scrutiny. Everything that was in there prior was scrutinized. Yes, it So was. if a safe place asked for 5500 last year, that was scrutinized for the first time when it was entered, and then it was passed on every year into this Warren article. The selectmen did <coughs> no one a favor by changing that because now you've passed through to people that have already proved themselves and come before us and proved their need with documentation, so on and so forth, in previous years. And then if they wanted an increase, put an increase through in a separate Warren article, which gave us the ability to reduce that <coughs> um, or eliminate it, or eliminate that increase. Either way, now you've put us at arm's length removed from that, and quite honestly, couldn't jeopardize the whole war article, depending on how people feel about it. You still have the right to, to uh, decrease those individual items on the floor. On the what? On the deliberative floor, you still have the right to decrease the requested sums. What I'm saying, Fred, is that the old process was yeah. a protection of sorts yes. to those agencies. I mean, we could have another 100 agencies come and ask us for money. Oh, yeah. And they'd all be val valid depending on, I've got favorites, you've got favorites. But the ones that show up on the list without a separate warrant article for them are <coughs> ones that have given value to the community in the past. If it's a new agency, they have to file a warrant article. But even for, even for because yeah, now, you're going to see everybody come in next yep. year and, yep. and give you an increase when they It see could them. well be, in which case you'll have 60 warrant articles. Madam Chair, there is the, the centrality of the argument right there. I believe I'm seeing four increases on this list, right, Fred? Five. Five? All right. I missed one. Mm. You have better eyes than me. Uh, no. Five. My glasses may not be right. <laughs> <laughs> four or five increases five. on this list. Yep. Now, the selectmen's virtue that they were pursuing, as I heard them at their meeting, was this av avoided having four or five more warrant articles for those increases. Yeah. That was the virtue. I have no problem with the number of, of And they articles. also said that some of them are not re requesting more money because they don't want to put themselves at risk in losing a particular warrant article, right. which is, in fact, the central point of your argument. Yeah. So it really comes down to the same philosophical question of whether it's too burdensome for the voters to choose or not. The selectman this year said, well, we're going to throw away the old policy, which gave the voters a choice, in favor of this new policy, which gives the voters less choice. Yes. And that's what it comes down to, as far as I can see it. Well, they voted out. We're ready Thank to you vote. for your question, Joe. We're ready to vote. We're ready yeah. to vote. I, I I'm ready to vote. All right, Brian's got a question. One quick question. Um, 
on the visiting nurses, I was told that this is a different company than we dealt with before. Several of these places have merged with other operations. Right. Visiting nurses is yeah. one of them. And okay. they've expanded their area and they've uh, right. uh, brought in a different organization with these, them. So the name's changed. I just want to add yeah. to that. Some of these visiting nurses, I've been down this road just recently, in hospice and so forth. Visiting nurses get mm. totally funded from Medicare and Medicaid. Yes. Okay? So why they need $40,000 is a quick question. One could ask that. CEO pay. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We had a motion. Who seconded? I did. Okay. All those in favor of this warrant article? Yes, I am. I shouldn't be. All those opposed? This is the problem with groupings. Yep. And abstentions. I'm going to abstain. I'm joining the chairman. Okay. And I'm going to abstain by the virtue that I do not. While well, I agree with the Warren article for funding, I do not agree with the process. I vote against it for that same that reason. Just for the and, same and Joan, reason. if you're writing all that I down, you can just say ditto for me. And ditto for Mike Pierce for voting against it. That's why I voted against it. That very reason. You want to vote against it, Steve, too? I vote against it. Okay. What's what next, Reg? Okay. Article 27. 12. Madam Chair, I move Article 27 is written. Second. <laughs> 27. 27 is the removal of pine trees to the Jimmy, Pine Grove Cemetery. <laughs> it's on Winnicott Road, almost to uh, everybody. Okay, we're gonna, away. we slow down just a minute. Article 27, Joan. I'll Jim second moved it. I'll second it. Steve seconded. Second it. Okay. All right, did. Fred is in the middle. We interrupted him of actually That's okay. explaining Next. it. We, we uh, already heard it all. We can continue, Fred. I don't know if you heard it all. <laughs> no, we heard everything you said. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had uh, talked to the cemetery trustees, two of them, and uh, I never did hear back from the third one, but uh, they both agree that these trees need to come down. We've had a number of them come down in pieces, yeah. but we're concerned yeah. about are the abutting property. These are 100-foot pine trees, right. and they're right up against the neighbor's properties. Um, once you start losing pine trees that are growing close together, you disturb the roots of even more trees. And that's exactly what's happening. So last year we had to go in there with the Public Works Department budget and remove the limbs off of the trees on the house that's on the west side of the cemetery because they were falling off and hitting the house and the cars. So it's time for these to go. Uh, they're getting old. They're getting brittle. Um, a number of them have gone, and, and the area is starting to open up, which means in high winds we're going to get Four. Eventually, we're going to get more. If we have a major, major storm, uh, we're probably going to lose some. So uh, we went to our vendor that provides the tree cutting in the town, and we asked for a cost to do the work. He gave us a cost for this coming year, uh, which is in the warrant article. And uh, both the cemetery trustees and, and uh, the selectmen agreed to put the warrant article in and to take the money from the uh, cemetery <coughs> trust fund. Is this the one on when it kind of where? It's just no oh, tax impact. The old cemetery between, be, yeah. between here and uh, uh, the landing road. Yes. Between here yeah. and Park yeah. Avenue. Right. Okay. Yeah, on the school trees, side. Uh, I didn't know it was called P uh, Pine Grove Cemetery. That's, no all. Tax That's why we're yeah. in the Pine Grove Cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we take 50000 There is no from tax them. impact on this. Okay. Because ready to vote. Right. Is everybody ready funded, to vote? Right? That's correct. Yes. So Let's we're ready to vote. Okay. I just I just have one question. This will not be from the town will not be doing this. This will be an outside right. yeah. contractor. This will be a contractor. Okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah I don't, I don't, I don't climb trees anymore. <laughs> <laughs> What's next, Fred? Okay. Unanimous on that? Is it unanimous? Yeah. Okay. What's next? Uh, article number 30. I move article 30 is written, Madam Chair. I second it. That's simply taking uh, the Wait. funds from the existing appropriation, that is the money that was given for the sale of cemetery lots last year. Yeah. Uh, we do this every year, and they're forwarded uh, through this appropriation to the uh, cemetery trust fund. We're ready to vote. So why, why, is there, why are we getting, why is there tax on that? Now, I don't quite understand that. Why because the money, the $10,500 that was for the purchase of the lots was oh. deposited to the general fund and used to mm -hmm. decrease taxes last year. Ah. So in order to take that those funds and put them over into the trust, we have to raise them again. Yeah. 
So it's not one of those theories again. They would spoil the plate. Would not have have this this will be the last year when we get the article. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. The following article, which is 32, the funds will go directly to the trust from now on. Okay. So move the I, I, I would say why did All right. All those in favor? Oh, God. Yeah. Opposed. Yeah, I'm opposed. I'm a, I'm, I don't want to be taxed by moving, just simply by moving money. I'm sorry. We forgive you, Jerry. 32. I just don't want to be taxed. Chair, I move article 32. is written. That's the next one. All right. Let's keep a little bit of order. Article 32 changes the situation that we just discussed in Article uh, 30. From now on, as cemetery lots are, are purchased, those funds will go directly to the trustees for investment rather than coming through the town and have to be reappropriated out of the following year. And we'll never have to worry about the theory of a fiscal impact on the matter anymore. Yeah. That's correct. Right. Right. Let's vote, Madam Chair. Which one is that? 32. 32. Oh, it's not a money article, so it's not here. I got you. All right. You don't want us to Do vote, on that, vote on that, Fred? That's up to you. I don't believe there's any there's, there's any no money, money in thirty two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, article thirty four as you might want to vote on the chair. principle hey. because you don't have to yeah, yeah, might want to vote on the principle. Thank All right, I have a principle. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I know everybody's oh, yeah. angry to get We're this going, but now we're going too fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Going back to thirty two. We have no money involved in that, right, Fred? That's correct. So we do yeah. not have to vote on No, that. you don't have to. So we won't. Okay. All right. Um, uh, the next money article is number 34. Which was moved by myself and I'll seconded second. by the guy next to me. I'll second it. <laughs> okay. And that is? Capital Reserve Fund the, charges for banking and brokerage. This is relative to the trustee of the trust fund, which we spent an hour and a half discussing yeah. right. just two weeks ago. This was Norm Silverdick's uh, presentation. Exactly. That's right. correct. The money is already in the budget. Ready to We've vote. already had the garbage amendment to that uh, money in the, in the budget. Okay. I'm okay voted with for by this committee. Let's no vote. questions? And now we're voting on the one article. I have no questions, but I'm not voting for this. <laughs> Call the vote, madam. It's all in those the budget those already, so we don't need it All those in favor. Here. It's in the budget. I'm not looking for it. It's called double dipping. <laughs> I call it something worse than that. <laughs> All right. Opposed? Me. <coughs> we <coughs> know that already. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. I was very well. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Oh, that was. <laughs> Thank you. Sure you don't want to I guess the next one is Article 40, Fred. So I so move as written. I'm not going to second Wait that. a minute. Let's let Ooh. Fred weigh in on this. Ooh. Okay. All the rest of the articles that are money articles are petitions. I can't present them for you because I don't. No, but that would be next on the list. So let's get it out of the way. I move Article 40. I'll second it. No, I'm sure I have, a, I have a discussion on this. When it's my turn? When it's your turn. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to make you go live. <coughs> yeah, let me get it. All right. So we have a second on that? From the branch. Oh, okay. Excuse this me, is Madam. On, yes. Point of order. Did you um, make a motion to recommend it or not recommend it? I can still vote against it, even if I said I recommend. Well, okay. Motion exactly. to recommend. Okay. I don't Thank want to get confused by inverting. I want to make sure. All okay. right. So we have sure. a motion to recommend, and who second it? I did. You second it. All right. We're going to go around the table on this one. Jim, I'm going to start with you. Is there any discussion on this? Is there anyone who's going to present this? Or? Oh, Fred, you want to present it? I mean, uh, we're familiar I, I, with it, but I, I, this is a petition I, I, the position of the selectman of the past has been that it's up to the petitioners to come and present it. So, my suggestion to the to the the board is that uh, you take it up at the public hearing and have them stand up and make a presentation. After they're done, you can take a vote on whether or not to recommend. Before we go right. into your final session. Final right. session. Right. I, I suggest we do that. I think it's too complicated. Yes. Well, we could best inspire them to come to the public session if we voted to disapprove it tonight. That would really inspire them to come. Uh, Probably I'd rather hear their Do as you please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to inspire, you know, participation. All right. right. You know what? That is a big issue. I don't want to yeah. shot change it. Right. Yeah. Well, at all these. Well, wait a minute, Madam Chairman. I mean, uh, I want to be sure that I'm going to have a chance to have a discussion on this at some point. Yes. I don't want to be denied having a discussion at the public hearing because I'm on the committee. We will open the public hearing yes. with a continuation of discussion on the Warren articles, namely right. this one. Which will allow before, committee men to participate right, as well. Before we go into public hearing. Yeah. Right, am I got the process on that right, Fred? Uh, you could do it that way. You could do it. You could ask them to come in separately and, and just 
to have you don't a have any session. days left for separate and I and I would well you can at the public hearing you do anything you want at the public right. hearing right. I'm just concerned last year there was a rule about committee men not speaking at the public mm -hmm. at the actual public hearing Oh, just you. No, I'd like. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't at that meeting. <laughs> All right. So that would. It was be right. I, I think, in to. fairness to this committee, because this we could have twenty people come in and talk about this. That's correct. Okay. I um, will request will request from the author uh, the petition of that we have one spokesman represent it. Right. For the recommendation and non-recommendation vote to this committee before we go into public hearing session. When are we going to discuss this? Okay. We're going to discuss this at, at, public at public hearing before we go into yeah. at the beginning of it. Isn't there a motion? It didn't. Yes, there was a motion. Would you withdraw your motion to? You withdraw the second, and then we can. <laughs> Thank you. I suggest you do it with all of them in order to give them an equal chance. Yeah. Well, how many are we talking about? We're just, just talking right about now. We have uh, let's see one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. I don't think that we can legally restrict the number of people. And I think we have we have a few more coming. So Although I, mean, I would love that yeah. to happen. You didn't have you didn't have the entire police department in here. No, no, um, I don't believe we can prevent people from speaking to public hearing. We're going to request that they have the request is a different each one. Yeah. Otherwise. We could have That's gone over this tonight or left it. They need your recommendation on the warrant. Right. Because it's an appropriation sum. I think they right. can meet us halfway. Yeah, I think that would be All right. right. I just want to be met halfway we're being, to know we're that being I'll be able to speak. courteous by extending it. research so. I've done on this. So are we going to extend an invitation to each one of these petitioners to appear before the public hearing to make we a will. presentation? Yes. If that's what the board wishes, we'll send that information. No, we don't need to Some of these are we don't black and white. Let them come. Clock and that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. 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 The this, you know anything. what? You've got one contact. So some pseudo committee that was created. We have one contact. Just make the one contact, right. and that's it. We don't need to go through some formal, let's send some registered letters out to 100 well, people. Well, nobody that's was going to do just that. Just too much. Well, whatever the extreme Contact was, the petitioners of the Warren article right. and ask them to represent their Warren article. Let's keep it simple so I can, I can table my motion and move yes, on to the next Thank one. Thank you. Can you this table your motion? Long, yes, right. if I'm allowed to speak at the public hearing. Uh, I'll move Article 42, <laughs> Madam Chair, for a recommendation. All right. 41. 41. I'll move that one as well. <laughs> Jim, do you feel confident enough to just either you or I take this one on? Which, which one? one? I thought I we were all these Explanation. 41 is, is the Christmas parade. Oh, no. oh, oh, no. oh, oh, no. 41's the town no, clock. The town clock. 41? That's the town ding dong. It's 41. Oh, oh you changed the, um, oh. Papers oh. change. Did that change? Yeah. They. We Mine had, says, no, yours I says 45, Christmas for 41 no, is the town clock. I got 41. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. We had clock. arranged them by order of the selectmen on right. the dates I they were received. I apologize. Did you recommend Which one is 41? I have two. moved the town cuckoo clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That's it's right. article 41 on my sheet I'll, I'll for 75,000 bucks. If it doesn't have a petition, are we going to do that here or there? I thought that was one of the, I thought the rest of them were coming in to us at the public uh, That's well, That was my impression. I thought we were just doing that for the group. No. no, I thought all of them. 41 I don't care. can. <laughs> all right. The only thing is your choice. We can. We actually can knock out um, 42. I'm sorry. The one for the Christmas parade. Because you've seen right, that before. No, 45. No, 45. Um, 45. 45. 45. I no, we should 45. just treat all the petition articles the same. Yeah. All right. Just treat them all at the They'd public hearing and be done. I mean, we're, we're not going to reject the Christmas parade. So let's do you know what we're going to reject the clock? I, I, might reject. I might vote against it. All right. It. Never mind. Sure. <laughs> let's treat them all equally. We'll treat all the all. rest of them equally. Thank you, Madam Chair. Right. Thank you, Jim, for your suggestion. Thank you. So just to Amen. reiterate, every oh. one of these citizens' petitions are going to be notified that they will be allowed to come to the public hearing state their case before we make a recommendation to either before forward it to we go into public one hearing. person speaking. One person oh, per, not every day. Yeah. There's yeah. going to be a public notice of the public meeting, so everyone will be notified. Yes. Yeah. We will make sure that each of the petitioners are contacted. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Fred. Thank you. All right. And okay. actually, based on what how that's represented, we will then go into public hearing right. Right. where the masses can then come up and speak. But I think it would be prudent. We've, put, we've got an invitation to allow them at least to represent the Warren article to us right. so that we can approve it by the petitioner. 
Right. Okay? So usually we go into public hearing and go right into public hearing. Next week what we will do is we will go clean up the rest of these warrant articles, allow the petitioner to come present the warrant article, we will vote on it, right. then we will close our meeting and then go, to the and public go hearing. into then public go to the hearing. Public. In public hearing, anybody else who wants to speak on that warrant article is free to do it. Great. Right. Okay. I think we're all clear on that. I got that yeah. right? Yes, yeah. ma'am. All right. Next on the agenda is the Next project. on the agenda is don't bother to put your coat on because you're not going anywhere. I've been keeping my coat on yeah. because Jerry gets turned to the thermostat. Right. <laughs> Madam Chair, how would you like to address the final review of the budget? Do you um, want a motion or what? I would like to address it with cyanide and that is so. <laughs> oh, no. We can accommodate you there. We're in town hall after all. Uh, all right. In all, in all seriousness, we let everybody get the funnies out. You get silly after a while, too. All right. A lot of us have been out here for a long time today. And it's been a long week. True. As chairman of this committee, I'm going to say, as chairman and somebody who's been on this committee for 14 years, I will tell you that this has been, without a doubt, the most difficult budget <coughs> round since I've sat in one of these chairs to come up with the number four. We had a lot of things, influx, insurances, um, needless to say, usually we're looking to put an increase um, or a, a number on utilities because they're increasing. Right now they're going crazy in the opposite direction. The proposed budget of $27,515,333 uh, is an increase of 7.39%. The public is never going to go for that. We know that. When we had just dollars sometimes <coughs> between the budgets, they, they took a default budget. On top of that, but that being said, we did go through the budget department by department, hoping that we would find something glaring at us. But as we went department by department, we didn't find anything there hitting us over the head saying, take us out, no, you can't do this. By the time we got through the budget, and quite honestly, by going through these Warren articles, there is a lot on the table. It's almost like the voters have a shopping cart. I think that the Warren articles that are out there, even though we don't all agree on all of them, and in different ways for different reasons, at least afford the voters an opportunity to vote for some things that are badly needed, that they've said they've wanted, and will bring closure to some things that have been going on for a while, specifically the roads. As Jerry pointed out, somebody pointed out, there's almost, what, $1.7 million alone DPW. just for DPW. That being said, we can't grant everybody everything. And to leave room to even have the voters look at the Warren articles with seriousness, had to go back and look at every number in the budget. And this is where it probably gives me the most stress because I never like talking about a default budget. But I found myself, and that this was not just done by me, piece this thing apart. I think I've been working on this for straight for a couple of months with other people, going over every line. And reviewing it from the standpoint of what was proposed, what we spent, where prices are going, the personnel that we have for the projects that we're proposing in the Warren articles, and trying to come up with a reasonable budget that would allow for some choice of things that we want and need still have a working budget. So that being said, every line was gone through. And I don't think we, we really lollygagged through any of this process. There's a lot of us, all of you are entitled to dig into the budget. But you can see when you go line by line, if we had done it, we would, we we, would, we don't even have a budget for another meeting, never mind anything else. And this goes long. 
And while I'm representing this very long-winded, I want to convey to you this was not done easily. All right? But it was done thoroughly. And I could probably keep you here for two more days if I went through every single line. And the approach to how this budget was reviewed is that one individual built the budget up, one individual tore the budget down. We listened to everybody's input on what they thought, went back, <coughs> revisited those entities. And this is probably the best I can give you for that entire process without sitting here through another year's worth of deliberations. The budget amount was for $27,515,033. That is what is in your budget book. The default budget that was also scrutinized at a figure of $26,507,097 at a 3.4% increase. In that default budget, it covered every obligation that we had. It also... And then some. Well, it had covered every obligation that we had as well as key changes in personnel in areas that was needed. Did not touch that. Did not undo that. We've been following, I should say, with the default number and going over that, looking at the fact that not only were things in there from a contractual stamp obligation standpoint, but there were also increases built into the default meant to move forward, not as much as we would have liked to with the regular budget, but certainly with some wiggle room. The areas that, that's the number that, or that's the budget numbers, I don't know how to say this, <laughs> that if we need a guide, go back and use that. I feel they were scrutinized. I still felt I could sit here and, and give you, when I'm done, even more numbers that could have been taken out of it, but I felt that the default numbers were at least fair. I did not feel that the submitted budget was reasonable, nor did I feel that the taxpayers would pass it. From the default budget, we also promised that we would come up with some number <coughs> relative to what's going on with gasoline and diesel. Gasoline, um, it was out in the news yesterday that we are now at 50% on barrel cost over what we were last year at the same time. It is, it, the price on the barrel was $50 compared to $100 last year and is predicted to go down into the mid-30s before it starts going the other way. I don't have a magic ball, I can only tell you where we are now. Did not give the fuel lines a 50% reduction chose to be conservative, and I'm asking you to give it a 25% reduction. That being said, and knowing how the utility companies are um, with electric, there should be, even though the rates are going up, there should be something for fuel adjustment charges that would take something out of that bite. Chose not to take anything out of the electric line. There are increases that are in the default budget that will, should be able to handle that, but felt, don't know what electric is ever going to do. We know that that's going up. How much they'll give us, give back in fuel adjustment, who knows, that wasn't touched. Then I look, we looked at some of the things that either from manpower or positions or other contracts that are in warrant articles, we could be double funding. The reduction, first of all, in the utilities would be $65,557. Sidewalks. 
we have $26,000 built in for sidewalks. When we sat here, what I found problematic with the sidewalks is that we don't have anybody to do them. And if just one or two of these projects with DPW passes, I don't even know where we're going to get the manpower to do everything we're going to do. So that being said, until there's a better plan and until we have manpower in place, somehow coming in here and saying I have a person and a half after Labor Day didn't inspire me with confidence that $26,000 would be spent on the, on the sidewalks. So I'm asking that 20000 come out of the default budget number and on the sidewalk line. In assessing, last year we moved $60,000 from legal into professional fees, but we also have a very large warrant article as well as hiring an additional person in that department that I think should offset. We, we haven't spent $60,000 this year, so I'm asking to reduce the professional fees from the, um, the um, default budget bottom line number by another 10,000. We have 17,000, uh, actually we don't, we have 35,000 for legal fees um, in the legal budget for um, dealing with the unions. And we've done collective bargaining, thank yeah. you, after 10 o'clock I get fuzzy, um, for collective bargaining. We seem to have a lot of success this year not paying for anything when it came to collective bargaining um, with the fire unions and so on. So I'm asking for reduction on that line of $17,500. When it comes to drains, we have $30,000 requested in the budget, in the default budget, and it's not, it's None of it is being used from what we can see. I'm asking that you consider reducing the default budget amount <coughs> by 15000 Those deductions hurt no particular individuals, do not go against the recommendations, I think, for the most part in that default gathering. Um, the total of those deductions would be $128,057 and would give us an operating budget of $26,379,040. Anyone anyway, that by me again, Madam Chair? Okay. The total reduction from, I'm, I'm starting with the default number. I could have started with any number. <coughs> All right. It's just the easiest way to go because I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Instead of going line by line and changing this and changing that, I'm just giving you the areas exactly. where I'm asking the changes, which would be the least amount of work. And then 25% across the board, anywhere there was diesel, anywhere there was gasoline, reduce that by 25%. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, we started with a default number of $26,507,097. Uh, so 26507097 with a reduction of 128057. Mm -hmm. And that should give us $26,379,040. What is doing the math? I hope if I've made a mistake you can correct me. Uh, 097 minus 128057. Oh, 2679040. There you go. Finance says it's correct. I'm sorry? Finance, Finance says, says it's correct? correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we recommend that. I'll second that. I'll just like Discussion. The only discussion I would have is I understand the gas and diesel, what people are saying. But when you look at the geopolitical world and you look at the volatility, I, I just worry that tomorrow it could go to 100. I mean, right now, today is what it's at. Mm -hmm. But when these people, you know, budgeted, they budgeted for certain things. And, 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 you know, you look at what happened in Paris, you look what's happening in Ukraine, you look what's happening in Russia. 
it's it's just to me it's just so volatile that to make a to make a, a, a reduction in that area is just it seems like it, 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 it you know the stock the, the equities go down 200 they go up 300 I know there's, there's no rhyme or reason if I can just comment on that believe me I struggled with that and I've talked to everybody from stockbrokers that's where I got the $37 figure um, and even at that, we're at fifty percent right now, not twenty five, but right now we're at fifty percent, possibly going further. I recently drove to Florida and traveled through every state on the eastern seaboard and saw gas prices as low as a dollar eighty six, but consistently all the way through the entire eastern seaboard, we're not an anomaly over here. This is what's going on. So I have to look at where we are. And I have to think that a lot of people are going to be really aggravated if it increases by 100%. Might that number be off? It might. The other thing that I looked at, everywhere that I looked, and it's, I'm using I, but there were a lot of eyes on this. Mm -hmm. I'm just using me collectively so that, you know, you can, you can throw the pies in this direction. That's okay. Everywhere I looked, I also looked to see if there was an offset where I looked at these things, obviously, some of these th things that I'm asking you for, there's other places in the budget or the spending that is warranted saying, you know what, maybe we don't need that much. One of the things where the gases is, is, con is in the offset to that could conceivably be the fact, and this is, you know, while we're gambling on the gas, gamble this way in your minds as well. We're about what, $40,000 left in pot, less in parking revenues this year over last year, Fred? Mm -hmm. And that had to do with the fact that last year, some people thought it was a nice summer, but really not so much. For people who love the beach, it wasn't as hot as it could have been. Mm -hmm. All right? So the year before last, we had <coughs> all thought it was more than forty, but $40,000 more. So if you're looking at a $65,000 cut and realizing we could potentially have added parking lot revenue should we have a good summer, one may offset the other. So I was looking for ways and, and saying, and it, that's as much of a crapshoot too, but to put that much money in the budget when it's coming down and ask for increases, we've got voters out there saying, you know, why, why are you increasing something that's a dollar less a gallon than it was a year ago? you have to do something so there were those that wanted me to take more and we <coughs> talked at great length looked at a lot of numbers and said we think this is rational and in it we'll take that gamble a little bit you're gonna run short gonna run short yep we pay the state contract price no federal or state taxes in it in November that was two dollars and forty five cents a gallon through the end of the fiscal year, we ran an eleven thousand dollar deficit in gas and diesel. Are you, with the are current you appropriations, to are you required to buy gas from the state, or can you That's buy? It's the only way we can get no federal and state taxes. Right, but you are not required to actually purchase it through. No, the we can go retail down here, and 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 we then have. to get the taxes back, we have to have a bookkeeping error, and you know, and we have to go and file for request to return taxes. And so there is an alternative. But you can file that. We can, but we don't have to. That's, that's going to be somebody else's job. My point is mm -hmm. that we're paying the going rate at the pump. The state contract comes down as the price of gas comes down. But they renegotiate, don't they? Not until next September. September? When September. did they negotiate? A when? year ago. A year ago, September. A year ago, September. Right. But weren't we told that that negotiation would happen before then? Well, all I know is the contract is good through September 2015. Okay. And right now, with those decreased costs going along during this particular year, we ran an $11,000 deficit in diesel and gasoline. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to cut more money out of there, then I'm going to have to transfer funds from other accounts in order to pay for diesel and gasoline, or vehicles aren't going to run. Well, that's yeah. doable, too. <laughs> it is, if you don't want to have police protection or well, fire or ambulance or police. plowing. I mean, or, I mean, we don't, you know, we, when the state needed money and they shut off the lights at, uh, at Ocean we'll Boulevard, we right all knew they had better choices than mm -hmm. that. I understand they just that. wanted to cause some local pain. So, so to suggest that you have to take it out of police, 
to, to, to suggest local pain is, is probably very similar, wouldn't you agree, Fred? The reality is that I'm stuck with what's in each one I of those budgets. I understand that, but there's, there, is, there is a lot of... of I don't uh, want to hear your political rhetoric. Uh, well, I don't want to hear your filibustering either. Uh, right. Do I have any amendments to the motion? I think that's it. I think uh, those comments are out of line. So weren't yours. And we can leave the seat. Why are you telling me I can't have a political oh, comment? Oh, okay. Oh, that's it. Fair enough. You're done. It. We're, almost at, we're almost at an end, gentlemen. Um, All right. I in due respect to the rest of this committee, is there any what, other comments? What was the number on the gas? You have diesel, the 25%. No, is this 25% is 65,557. But Fred has said that that will give us a deficit of 11,000, approximately so 11,000. Do I have any amendments to the motion? I was just going to make a comment that. Okay. And the threaten us is totally unacceptable. Yeah, that's the old scene. I'm, you know what? No. I'm Money is returned to the general fund every year. I know. And he would just be returning 10000 less dollars to say that the police it won't be police protection is absurd. It's just absurd. All points are well taken. I would ask you gentlemen to move on with what has transpired. Oh, I'd is, like to make a comment. This is where we make the budget. Jerry, is the comment on the budget? I will say this. I've studied this budget inside and out. I've asked so many questions. You heard me. There's enough money in this budget that Madam Chairman has proposed to cover everything. We touched and only a funny. fraction of what perhaps right. could have been, um, and we did it. Everything thought over hours. It wasn't. I don't like this. I don't like that. There is a rationale. There is not. A, there's not a big punch list. There may be disagreement in what the number is. You may feel the proposed budget was more of where you wanted to be. You're all entitled to your opinions and to voice them here in this review. That's what this review is for. That's where I am as as your chairman and and only as one person on this committee. As I started this whole conversation with, this was the most difficult in the 14 years that I've sat here ever to have to come up with. And Mike, you know that, because I'm yes. always on the other side of the <coughs> no, But I feel there is enough money in this budget. Some lines may have to be moved around. I'm not, I think if I had gone line by line, it would have sounded more like a challenge. Um, to the town manager and with all due respect he knows where to move things and, and how to move things when he needs to. That's not saying. I didn't throw these numbers out with the need from the beginning to have to move anything. And a lot of these new positions, they're in there. They were putting them in the budget. They're there. So we do have some growth even with the default budget. So I don't want to, you know, it's, it's... Some growth? There is some growth. Some growth? Well over a million dollars in yeah. excess in that default <laughs> budget, in my opinion. Well over a million dollars. Well, again, I'm we've going to... We've got the, the, the New Hampshire Municipal Association, uh, who our town manager just, just on Tuesday night is telling us <coughs> that the NHMA is monitoring the critical factor of the Obamacare changes, which is too confusing for anyone really to understand. But we should have complete confidence in NHMA because he's never seen them make a mistake. Okay. Yet, just two weeks ago, I'm bringing up the fact that the NMHA put out a legal opinion saying that multi-year contracts must be approved by Tom Warren article, and he replies to that, that he's entitled. Okay. Entitled. Tim. But uh, the voters are not entitled to have a choice in the matter. We, we heard Yet, it. this is embedded in the default budget, along with a variety of other things we've seen. He's getting a 12.2% raise. 12.2. We've got raises of double-digit raises. <laughs> across various parts of this budget, and they're in the default budget. The voters are not being given a choice. Now, you can reduce, and I think you're correct when you say, I started with the default budget and I started reducing. I think that's a great place to start. We all but did you cut enough? Not from my point of Wait view. Wait a minute. While I'm, I'm, let me clarify that. While I'm using the default number because it is the simplest place to right. go. Right, it's the most logical, yes. Budget was reviewed 
up and down. So in other words, we also went back to the budget itself <coughs> and every line as it was requested, compared it to the default request by legal contractual obligations as well as the growth that was in there, compared that to what was spent this year and yeah. last year, and that's how I that heard all that, Madam derived. Chair, but I all don't right. want to feel. So I don't want you to sound like I'm ungrateful right. for the effort because no. I know the effort was 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 uh, probably a very large one and a difficult one to make. Okay. okay. I'd like to but move from, on to the vote. From my too. point of view, for those who are suggesting it's too much of a cut, there are those who seriously believe and have Could substantial have reason for believing it is not even close to enough. Okay. That being said, what was the total amount you took out of gas? The gas and diesel. Right. We took out 65507 which represents 25 of the requested amount that had an increase over last year. Okay, so the proposed, the amount even in the default budget has an increase. Yeah. We took every line that had diesel and gasoline. I just wanted to, to know Right. That. And then we took the 50% reduction from where we are and we have that on the advice that it's going further mm -hmm. and considering the fact that if we have a good summer with parking lot revenue, perhaps the income from that will offset what we've done entirely. Mm -hmm. Okay? Can I give you an absolute on that? No. But I think we do owe it to the voters to say we cannot give you an increase in fuel charges when we have as large a decrease yeah, at no, the I pump. Just, I no, mean, no, it's... it's All right. I'm going to ask one more time. Is there any amendments? No. Uh, Jim? I, 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 can I have a question? Sure. Seeing I'm new to this process. You keep saying we, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure who we is. You keep saying you, we did this to the budget and we analyzed this. I've and listened to every single member here mm -hmm. who has spoken about any part of this budget. Mm -hmm. So if you contacted me and you discussed a part of this, I took it seriously and worked on it. So when you say we, are you referring to what happened at this meeting? Is that what you... Everything that has happened at this meeting as well as anyone who contacted me. It's not... I never held a meeting. No, no, I'm not, say, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I'm not clear on we. who we is. The we That's is all everybody I'm here. You were all free at any time okay. to ask questions. That's fine. There were multiple questions that well, came. You, you were saying things like we analyzed... Right. Oh, we did? On, on where the gap... No. Sev several members You're saying have we, reviewed numbers. We okay. analyzed the gas and where it, and the <laughs> stock broke is. At, and, right. and I'm not sure where all that, I just don't know that. Well, Jim, you can be confident in one thing. We did not include me, except for one, one phone conversation I had with Eileen on the general notion four months ago. Well, I don't care who you spoke. No I mean, I'm just saying I don't know. I don't know where that collective we is. I, I mean, I don't know if it's people outside this room. Or if it's just the people in this room, Only I don't... the people in this room. Okay, all Unless right. there was a professional, like I said, I called a few stockbrokers that I know and said, you know, this is where gas is. You're going to... I don't mm -hmm. have a clue. Okay. Tomorrow, are we going to be going the other way? And they're saying, no, they anticipate that it'll go down into the 30s. You may want to go out and buy oil stock. I don't know. But every now and then there is something that I don't know that I will call a professional in a generality okay, to say, fine. where are we going? Madam Chairman, the, the list there that you have, how many items? Seven, eight, nine, maybe? One, two, three, four, five. But that's the point. That is not a we list. That's your list. That's the items that you feel in this budget need adjustment through this final review. You is are that correct? All at, this is the final review. That's so right. Wait a second. <laughs> Those, that's your list. That And I presented it that way. But that's there right. are there are. So it is not a collective we list. We haven't voted on it yet. No. no. The point being that we have done, I think, due diligence oh, yeah. over 12 sessions and 15 <clears throat> people listening to the presentations of mm -hmm. the department heads. And here we are in the final hour where you have come up with a list. Any one of us could come up with our own Did you? 50. Did you? No. Uh -oh. Did because you? I think I'm satisfied well, the point with the, the due diligence that has been done 
prior then to this session. Mr. Renier, you'll vote accordingly. Right. Well, that, I just wanted job. to make that clear. That, that is your list, not a no, we list. No, that is, it is no, not just my list. it's a list he's maybe in the no. committee. Oh, no. uh, I don't, I don't, no. Did you How? Call Did you call no. Just vote yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh. Let's have a vote. Just vote yes or no. So I'm ready to make a vote. So All right. It's a fault budget of $26,507,097, Article 12. What did you, you say? The, 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 Was the, the there a correction budget. on that? Are we using the wrong amount? Five hundred twenty-six million five hundred seven and ninety-seven. Yeah. Right. Minus one hundred twenty-eight fifty-seven gives us twenty-six million three hundred seventy-nine thousand forty dollars. So that's the item that you want us to recommend to move forward to the deliberative session. Yes. Yes. The twenty-six twenty-six three seven nine oh four public hearing to the public, the public hearing. Yes. Yeah. That so is that the, the motion? That yes. would be the budget yes. amount. Yes. Yep. So there is a motion <laughs> to move to the public hearing right. the figure of twenty six million three hundred seventy nine thousand oh forty, right. which includes the hundred twenty eight thousand oh fifty seven reductions from the proposals that you made. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Would you like would to call for a vote, Madam? That? So this is a budget committee yes. budget. Yeah. This right. is the budget committee budget. Right. Right. We had a proposed budget. Oh. We saw the default obligations. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. And in the default budget also was built in some other things. Mm -hmm. All right. It was not just strictly obligations. There were other things in the default. Well, oh, that's just not complicated. That's, right. no. that's exactly. the bottom line. That's so that's, yeah. the that's the bottom line with yeah. those five deductions in Let's those vote. places. Right. So are, you, are we ready to make a vote on your, your, your it? Your argument, argument that, that are we the, to make a motion? Yeah, the good. budget that was been floating around here for the last few months is not going to be approved by the voters by the town meeting, by the town legislature. And we are the only committee of the town legislature whose only job is to produce a proposal <coughs> that they will find acceptable. I mean, I can't criticize that argument in any way. And this leads. I just think we could have been more. Um, it is what it is. The word you're searching for is aggressive. It is what it is. Non-aggressive. I think we we could have used Occam's knife here. Okay. Let's talk about that. Let's find out. We still let's have a motion in a to second. Do. second. No, it's a, Occam was a philosopher that said to find things right with his own. All right. Call for the vote. All right. So, well, civility here, I guess. So. Given everybody the Philosophy is not vulgarity, okay? Tim, <laughs> everybody's had the ability to make an amendment. All right, I'm going to call for a vote. All those in favor? Of this number? Nine. Nine. Uh, we'll find out when the hands are done. Okay, those that are voting no are Kravitz, Rainier, Ladd, Waddell, and O'Laughlin. Is that correct? Yep, the four rebels. I didn't know that was a prerequisite. Not to be able to add Where are you going? Going? Magic Madam Chair, I move we adjourn. No, no we're not done. We oh, have yeah. minutes. We're not going to vote. All right. Minutes. And Chrissy, so that you know that, and so that the rest of you know, that is also Article 12 mm -hmm. in the yeah, Warren Articles. Right. So that amount will need to be changed in Article 12. Minutes. My other set is numbers with them. I don't know. All right, minutes. Joan, you want to direct us through the ones that have not. Okay, the ones you want to do, Joan. We're going to do them all. That have Except not. October 21st. I moved. Now, that I one moved was those a lot. Let her give the list. What's the list? Give no, us a list of days. We're going to go one at a time. We're going to go one date at a time instead of me going page by page. If you have any changes to any of the minutes once we say the date, just put your hand up and we'll I deal move, with that. I move for October 21st minutes. All right. A second on that? I'll second it. Jerry second it. Okay. Do we have any changes from anyone on the October 21st minutes? No. All right. Seeing none, vote to accept. I'm fine. Unanimous, unanimous. Yeah. Or Glenn, you did I'm <laughs> not sure that was. Okay. I was going to abstain, abstain because okay. I can't remember. Joan will take care of whether you were here or not. The next yeah. one, Joan. Next one is December 4th. 
I move, I move the minutes for December 4th. Do I have a second? second. All right. Does anyone have any changes to the minutes when of was it, December, December 4th? The one. On which one is that? It's about You're the, fire, the department. fire department. Fire department. I don't think I was here. Fire department, I don't think so. I remember that meeting. Well, it, it says oh. you were. It says, it says you were. must have been. I'm in favor. <laughs> okay. Both. All right. No changes. Uh, All those in favor of accepting the minutes from December 4th. I'm all set. Oh. Okay. Okay. December 10th. I move the minutes of December 10th. Second. Mr. Pluck, was I here then? That day, too? You were there. You came in late. Oh. <laughs> 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 I got a partial vote. <laughs> oh, my word. Tim, who are you kidding? You've got the stuff memorized. November 10th. I got All right. November are there any changes to the minutes of December 10th? No. December 10th. Okay. All those in favor? I'm all set. I'm just going to okay. Next one is December. On, that one. on December 10th. Yeah. yeah December 11th. Yeah. Uh, I work first. They both work. Wait, we're back. Joe yeah. wasn't here. Are you here as you marked out as present on December 10th? You're marked out uh, as present. It's when it's did you get that one? No. Joe, you must have been here. Yeah. All right, next no. that. Yeah, you're excused. Okay. On the tenth? Oh, excused halfway through. 11. Yeah. yeah. All right. December 11th. 11th. So December 10th, Joe was excused. So that will be an extension on his No, life. December 11th. He was here on the 10th, John. He was here on the 10th. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. The 11th. It's the 11th yeah, he, he was here. All right. The 11th. And Bob Ladd. All right. I move okay. the minutes of December Second. 11th. Second. I have a change uh, uh, on page two. Uh, I don't know. I haven't got them. Okay. Um, just a simple thing. Uh, three quarters of the way down, the vote. Nine yes, three no. I believe Chairman Latimer asked for the vote before we voted. He asked for the vote before no. we No. You made an amendment. Then she asked for a vote. You voted on the amendment. Men, right. And then the amendment should That's be before we voted. And then we voted. Motion passed. Yeah. We haven't got the chance. Yeah, it's it's the wrong it order. It should just say motion or amendment passed. Right. And then she asked for a vote on the amended motion. Right. Okay. M amended main okay. motion. Okay. Either you way. Just put that word. That in. works. Thank you. Next okay. one. Next one. Wait, we got a vote on that. Oh, I'm sorry. It was unanimous. <laughs> Did we vote on that one? Not yet. Any other changes? <laughs> it wasn't here. All right. Extensions don't count. All those. I'm all set. Okay. All those who are here. December 16th. I move. Uh, I'll get make a motion to second. move. Is that, which, what was covered? December 16th. That was the uh, school. School. School, okay. That was a nice one. Ah, uh, easy one. That was easy, yep. Excused. So. What? Yeah. 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 I was excused. All right. Yeah. Can you First of all, before we have a yeah. vote, says you were excused. is there any changes that anybody wants to make to the minutes of December 16th? <laughs> no. no? Am I listed as absent or excused? Unexcused. 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 I move that I be excused. Too late. Did you Too call late. me? Unanimous. No. I move that the committee acknowledge that I was excused. Yeah, you're unexcused. We're not acknowledging. Unexcused. You if you do not call me, you are not no, excused. You are unexcused. I moved it. I'm sure you're Joe moved. called. <laughs> All right. All those in favor of passing <laughs> December 16th. Oh, okay. Michael, oh, were you here? You weren't here, Rich. So you're abstained. Let's hang together here. Jones is <laughs> okay. The I'm next one. The word here. <laughs> All right. Ken. Is January sixth. I make a motion to. to All right. Now we just got this. Did you did you send a copy to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. yes. Did everybody get it? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, I yes. got it. All right. January sixth. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I gave that to you. Okay. Okay, Mike and I have copies it. up here. You second it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Meeting. Sure, we all had time to read it. Has it been moved? <laughs> I moved it. Mike seconded. You didn't get to review I remember the time. I even Any I changes, to madam? Either. Okay. Do you all feel confident enough to mm -hmm. take a oh, vote on yep. this? Yes. I feel yes. confident enough in Joan. I don't have to read the this minutes. Is all the right. School. Yeah. To approve January sure, approve. 6th, all yeah. those in favor? I approve. Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. I'll second that. 
What else you got to do, Madam Chair? Do we need to uh, That's it. A, a vote on that, Madam Chair? <laughs> <laughs> public hearing at the school. All those in favor of the Yeah, I have had a What is the 1036? All right, for those of you who need to know, the meeting, 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 the mee